Welcome to the Old World Fanatics, your Warhammer fantasy podcast to quench your hobby thirst for all things the Old World. I'm one of your hosts, Gomo, and I'm joined this time by Andrew and our honorary co-host, Kenny Six Inches, or Kendall, mate. How are you going? <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> for those on all YouTube, just gave us the jazz hands. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for, uh, yeah, jumping on pretty short notice, actually. I think I asked you about two days ago if you were around. Um, we did... <laughs> Something like that. We mentioned uh, last week, uh, Josh, uh, well, for those who are listening, Josh is away, like we said last week. He's mm. off to Malaysia. Um, so we thought, well, why not drag another third person on? Yeah. And we talked a little bit about Castle Assault last week, um, but why not get the, uh, the you know, the, the word out of the actual horse's mouth about cool. Castle Assaults and all things, you know, don't be a dick, comp and old world and all that sort of stuff. So <laughs> thanks, oh, Kendall. Yeah. Really yeah, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll let you give us a bit of an intro in a minute, but what I might just do like I always do, just as the usual ramble at the front here, just makes it uh, what the patrons that we have, it, it sort of Ooh. allows us to do what we do. So I want to give them a quick shout out. Um, I don't believe since last week we've got any new ones, but we still have our quality, uh, where are we? Yep. I've got to load it up. I should have pre prepped for this. Uh, 24 Team. or whatever it is, paid members. These guys just for the people who don't know we've got a uh, two dollar tier on patreon.com slash old world fanatics it just goes a little way to paying for this recording basically um so if you're uh, if you're wanting to support us you can go there but otherwise uh you don't get a whole lot if you do all you do is you get a shout out if you know our show. <laughs> that's all good <laughs> and our appreciation. it's our appreciation yeah so we'll go down that and uh kenny if you haven't seen there is a person we don't know who it is and we don't want to know who it is that's about i don't know what fifth from the end who changes their name all the time so that's sort of our fun uh patron section we don't it's anyway we'll get to that and uh, probably have a laugh <laughs> so anyway uh thanks for uh matt morris uh, thomas vavasau griff jess tours wood duck josh griffiths ninanawam daniel broadstock jonathan wengler Elliot Mitchum, Chris Turnbull, Gilthos Drakonos, Julian Diesel, Cameron Atkinson, Richard William Payne, Robert Z, Sniff Wax Spit Viper. Hey, that's the same as last week. He hasn't changed. Oh, he hasn't. Sniff Wax is. He's, uh, he hasn't delivered this week. Maybe it's Josh and he's gone to Malaysia. <laughs> he's gone away. <laughs> and he hasn't changed the name. I'm, yeah, anyway, we'll check this later. Uh, uh, Andrew Dickens. McAllister, Bobby Gherkin, Gunwich, Sean Ritchie, who we might have on Friday on a Ooh. Dark Hill faction review. So trying to arrange that with Sean. Uh, Todd Lloyd and Chapstick. So thanks, uh, patrons, for your support. And for those listening on YouTube, uh, hit the like, subscribe, and uh, a bell button or alert whatever it's called if you want to support us that way so big thank you um that's enough of that rambling uh before we start kendall do you want to say hi to our listeners and give us a quick background maybe intro of how the hell did you get into all things wargaming i guess oh, well, you don't have to geez. go too deep because it's <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> it take a while oh well, just quickly it was uh, it was deep in the dark days of the, the mid 90s and my parents uh, decided that uh, you know, hanging out with pedophiles, as they called them, at Games Workshop was the way to go. Yeah. Because uh, why else would old men be hanging out with young kids playing games? Yeah. Um, and that really, really probably shaped my attitude and uh, you know, my, my enjoyment of the game, actually, because uh, I can't do it without some old man touching me. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And they're warily old men yeah, doing the touching. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> Is that right? It's all relative. I can exactly. always find an older man to touch me. Uh, True. Yeah, so no, no, I've just been playing since the, the mid 90s, uh, pretty much yeah. consistently, um, to the point that uh, somewhere around about the 2000s, mid 2000s, I realized that I'd boiled all my friends away down to the, you know, just to the core of nerds. And this is my life now. There's no escape. Uh, I, I, I've, I've you know, cut off all other ties. Everyone yeah. else is gone. I was wow. really deep there. down the rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah, my ass is too large to pull myself out like Winnie the Pooh now. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you took over, um, and you've been running our Legion's Newcastle sort of wargaming mm. uh, club for what ten years now? What would it be now? Eight? No, 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 no. It was, it was just before COVID. Oh, it was, was it? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah it seems, it seems like it was longer than that. I, I, I got, uh, I got a few, uh, like you know, five or six good months out of it, and then uh, the club yeah. shut down for basically ah. for two years. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I kept going strong. I had faith in myself, yeah. and 
you know, kept you know showing up every Sunday to, to play myself with myself. Oh, God. Hmm. <laughs> and um, yeah, then of course uh, it's only really started kicking off again in the last mm, couple of years. Yeah, uh, we yeah we've had to suspend. So this is actually the only the second Castle Assault uh, since 20, 20, 2019, 20, yeah twenty nineteen. Right. Um, so Did, we had we had one last year. Was that ninth age? Did I go to that one? I can't remember. Might, maybe we, we had we had ninth age. Um, yeah, yeah, we, we played ninth age. Um, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, it's it was. Thing. I can't remember. I, 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 it was, was it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, pretty sure it was. Yeah, I yeah. think I was there for that very last one. Was it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I, yeah. I remember when it got handed over to you. So that must have been then, because I remember a few, uh, few were given a bit of a speech thing or yeah. something. It's I don't know if oh, it was casting or, or something. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It was only six years. Six, okay, cool. Awesome. And what are you mainly playing these days? Like you play so many games, don't you? Or, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. But, you know, being you know the, the, trying to lead the club, I I try to play everything that everyone's playing except for forty k. Okay, because <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> I, I stopped early on. Yeah, yeah, I stopped early on that I don't play forty k, and I have tried. I have played a few of the slow mm-hmm. grows that we've done over the years, and I get like two or three months into it and realize, oh, still not for me. But, yeah, uh, yeah. Do you play Heresy? Um, have you? Did, did you oh, yeah, play I, any I, of the? I play 30K. Yeah, I play thirty k. Yeah, it's yeah. A completely different no. game. Yeah. On. But and, what uh, about yeah. um did you play that uh the second ed forty K one that they did the other day? You played, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I played ones. second ed forty K. I have to admit I did play second edition, I played third edition, and then it started getting too complicated for me. Yeah. Because they started releasing things too quickly and if you mm. don't play, you know, often enough. Yeah, you, you know, just can't get back into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that, that's it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I really enjoy any scale of game too, so you know, I play the Epic Armageddon's. I, I play the the Titanicus. I love those smaller, or larger, smaller scale. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, that's, I think that's where the tactics are. In those games, yep. um, much more enjoyable at that level, and uh, a bit more beer and pretzels um, when we get to the mm. the larger scale uh, yeah, games. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, yeah. No, but... Don't want to open up the can of worms, but um, with the 40k thing, was that mainly down to like it's a bit of meta chasing these days, and a lot more like builds are winning like internet lists and things like that rather than yeah old... no to be honest I, I never experienced that so as i said i stopped playing around about third edition i think fourth edition came out just after i stopped playing um yeah but i did yeah. start playing uh, age of sigma yeah uh, just before second edition age of sigma came out so when they'd you know everyone had points lists and things like that and there's a few good mm-hmm. books out there and i, I enjoyed that because it felt like um it was fairly stable um yeah. you know maybe new books coming out every once in a while but you know every second one was something to do with the um sigmarines or what they want to call themselves uh, yeah. so nothing really was developing there at any great speed uh but then you know the, the second edition came out but then the general's handbook started coming out every yeah, six yeah. months yeah and also yeah. me yeah. playing you know three or four games every six months meant that every time i went to play a game i was getting told completely different rules or different objectives or different ways to play and, and yeah. you know if i'm not going to be consistently playing or keeping my eye on the prize sort of thing then i was gonna get left behind so yeah. i had to withdraw from that and i imagine from what i hear 40k is pretty similar to that or you know, mm. but it's a few more additions ahead of it i imagine yeah, yeah. Mm. no I, I, yeah I, I can see that it's like if you're in it it's fine because you're used to it but yeah if you walk, mm. I, I found that with ninth age a little bit where mm. uh, before it settled down in that early what well, 2.0 release yeah. or whatever it just was like if you didn't play for a bit you'd come in and go oh crap what's happened you know yeah um, it, 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 I think it's still weird the way in, they kept but... refining it yeah the, the rules kept refining they kept changing they kept going oh there's too many aberrations in this or too much potential for this and so we kept changing it and so unless you kept your eye on that prior on the on the ball um mm. and you know, we were reading those release notes that are coming out every you know, month or so and mm. you know just like um like another game that used to develop as we played was epic armageddon it was a lot slower though so you know you at least would actually develop over like a year uh before mm. it got you know, you know changes were made and and you know it was introduced as an actual official list and just watching you know something not going the way you want it to go or you way you don't envision it going it's just really painful so when you're watching a development and you're seeing people go oh no 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 you should be playing it this way or these things are the best mm. thing and you're like you guys just don't understand how the game plays you're you're, you're pushing something that doesn't matter it's not something mm. that's going to you know, it make the impact or change the list. It's just mm. something that it's an aesthetic sort of thing. And uh, you guys don't realize this thing over here is what's going to really break it. 
um, you know, you, you put your, your opinion forth and things like that, you don't get that sort of or any response or you, know, you carry with that, then it kind of uh, dissuades you from doing that sort of you know, feedback or play testing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you've been you've been getting some old world games in then, I guess. Uh, you sort of, yeah, 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 yeah. Must be like a mm, I don't know twenty or so um, okay. old world yeah. games now. Cool. Yeah, and I've, I've been enjoying it. I haven't really developed my tactics. What I've been mm. developing is um, my recall of uh, rules that are old world. And not eighth edition, seventh edition, yeah. sixth edition, fifth edition, yeah. or fourth edition. <laughs> it's like that, isn't it? Yeah. We still do that. Even in our latest battle report, we we're like, hang on, is there unit boundaries in this game? No, there's not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> try to work. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's a little bit like that. Yeah. So, how are you finding overall? Is it just, is it more of a case of, um, it's just good to have it back a bit? Is that, like, it's obviously yeah, I think that's the a community part back. of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, bring the community back. Like, I'm seeing a lot of faces I haven't seen in a long time. A lot of people interested mm. in playing a game, but mm. that's true of when we were trying to push the sixth edition. You know, Josh yep. and yourself could relate. And, you know, Castle Salt last year, Andrew. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's good to see people who, who want to have another crack at it. But it's um, it's quite encouraging to see how many, you know, without even testing out the rules yet, mm. are back to give it a crack. You know, uh, people I haven't seen, you know, play since seventh edition, sixth edition. Really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, I've that's seen them the, out with their lists again. Yeah. 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 That's what I hope. Um, because it is a bit, you know, when I don't know, like if you're from sixth edition, you'll see lots of similarities. But I think if you're in eighth, you'll see a little bit of the similarities as well. So it's almost like it's, I don't know, it's sort of bridging the mm. gap a little bit, you know. Um, yeah. It's, it's a marriage of the two you can see there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Oh, well, that's cool. Um, yeah. So we want to obviously we'll talk a little bit more. Uh, later in the show quickly about, yeah, Castle Assault in general and sort of some of the viewpoints and the comp. We sort of touched on this last week about uh, don't be a dick uh, comp, which I thought, <laughs> let's get you on. You're all the one who's probably going to be judging all this stuff. So just sort yeah. of get your idea of what that means. Um, right. But before that, we had a little bit of news, not old world news, um, but just following on from last week, they actually did do the reveal of the launch box for AOS. Um and Andrew, I don't know, you're a bit of a Skaven man or, or starting to scheme on the Skaven. Um, starting to scheme. <laughs> I just think it's I a thought, challenge. A challenge yeah, making a viable Yeah, I had some Skaven. points here about uh, whether or not how viable these old Skaven are in old world. Let me just see if I can bring mm. up the uh, screen here. But, I mean, firstly, model-wise, I mean, the um, – sorry, I just need to bring a window so I can control this thing. Um Model-wise, I mean, we, it's the same sort of stuff we talked about last week. Really, is that the, the aesthetic? The aesthetic is still it's so uh, still old worldish. Hasn't gone too crazy into AOS. I don't believe. Yeah. I mean, this guy's obviously a little bit more uh, AOSy, but there's not really any. There's there's not nothing well, analogous, is there, that you could use this guy for in old world? The uh, what's, no, what's no. the claw lord on Norbeast? Yeah, yeah. No, they got Wasn't none of Sorry, Andrew. Oh, no, no. I was going to say, I, I didn't think there was the... Because, you know, the old school Forge World had like that giant rat mm. mount. I don't... I don't. Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah, in the rules, though. It did, eh? but, yeah, it didn't have it. But there was a... Well, wasn't there a pox rider who was running around on a, a rat for the Illustria campaign? Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so I guess you could use him for some of that in 6 and stuff or whatever mm. it was. Is, yeah. is Illustria 6? Yeah. It was. Yeah, last year was sixth edition. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, the, the red crested skinks and all that jazz, so they could bring back the bowmen. Yeah, <laughs> but the rest of these are, are like definitely doable. I guess is Grace here, um, which I don't think we'd seen previously yet. And then you've got the um, the rat ogres. Mm -hmm. um, are these are these almost like I can't remember what the old old rat ogres look like? But do they have like? Are these almost like cross between Rados and Stormer? Uh, the, what's what was the ones in Storm Fiends? Storm, oh, Storm yeah, Fiends or? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think they're closer to Rado because the Storm are Fiends they? were yeah. definitely yeah. more mechanical. These guys have mechanical parts, and you know you can see there's a some guy with a warp, for, uh, warp fire thrower on an mm. arm. But I think they, they, they're, they're much closer to the older um, yeah. Storm Vermin. A bit yeah. beefier on the up up side, uh, upper body, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, the, the G, you know, GW would be insane not to try and appeal to not only Age of Sigma but uh, the old world. So mm. I think a lot of these designs are designs that didn't really 
you know, or, or redesigns some aren't really things that need to happen, but they're just to try and drag people back in. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're not really. Yeah, I mean, obviously, some the, of the, the Skaven movie. stuff was very old, no. though. Hey, like some of it. But yeah. yeah, some of the models were getting a bit ridiculous, but yeah, yeah. My, yeah most of them were that. not too bad. Well, it's yeah. just, it's a, like the Island of Blood was the the, the last big release of Skaven, mm. and uh, I guess uh, they they probably wanted to try and risk or cycle out the 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 designs, which were the multi part models. So yeah. you remember the you know, even the storm vermin were like legs, they torso, head, arms, and that sort of stuff. You know, yeah, unnecessary amount of uh, assemblage. Like uh, putting the tomb kings yeah. together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Then this. Yeah, we've got the rattling warp blast. So I guess this is not really anything, uh, but obviously you just proxy this in for. I mean, I don't know how big this is, but like a warp oh, lightning it's, it's cannon or anything. Like, yeah. 60 mil base or something, yeah. yeah. Or, or it could be a spear rattling gun. Yeah, be pretty easy. Uh, we saw this guy, I think, already, the warp, the warp lock engineer, and then, yeah, and then they got all the um, clan rats. So these are all the ones. I think that, did they say 40 in the box? I can't remember what it said, 20 or 40. Uh, storm vermin, uh, not storm vermin, uh, clan rats. Clan rats. Um, so well, in good. AOS, it makes sense they're 40 at least. Yeah, yeah. I think it was 40. Yeah. Actually. It's a fair bit, which, you know, obviously, yeah, there's a people lot for a box. Buying them. But I mean, to go on, obviously, this is AOS, so it's not really old world, but to sort of go on the old world bend and what we just talked about before, we were mentioning this last week. It's a bit, it feels a bit sad that at least what's coming out of the community is um, the Skaven old world legacy list isn't that great. And then I worry yeah. that that's a bit of a shame given all these awesome miniatures. Yeah, we won't yeah. see as much crossover as we might have. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what your thoughts are there, Kendall. On have, have you you well, have maybe, played Skaven in the old world? I think you were saying. Yeah, I've had a game with the Skaven in the old world, and right. uh, to be honest, I just adopted the same tactics I used in six minus uh, slaves. I don't have any more. Um, yeah. Or, or non-volunteering workers or something. I don't know how you <laughs> talk your way around that. Um, but basically, yeah, I just found myself playing the exact same list I kind of would have played in 6th edition, minus slaves. And and once again, I, I, I moved everyone to a certain range and just sat there. Because mm -hmm. you know, I, I, don't, I don't beat anyone in close combat. I don't beat anyone in shooting purely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. magic and, and shooting uh, with the, the guns, which aren't as effective as they used to be. Mm, yeah. uh, you know, your temple weapons with the larger bases, but then your rattling guns aren't you know, actually anywhere near as effective or broken. I'd uh, I'd venture to say as they <laughs> used to be because they were broken. They like, were in eighth though a bit. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, they 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 they, they, they were broken in six, seventh, and eighth. You know. It's, oh, there you yeah. go. Yeah. Like they never got any worse or better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they did, well, they they didn't get a book in eighth really, did they? So. Um, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, seventh edition, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, kind of crazy yes. to. I guess kind of crazy to have it in the launch box, and then they never got an army book, which is sort of. Mm. But I guess I don't know. I guess are they saying that the seventh one was hints hints towards eighth? I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Well, the, the, yeah, the, I think the sixth and the seventh. You know, when they were released in their respective editions, they were aiming towards the next edition. Mm. Um, yeah, kind of like the Wood Elves in sixth edition. You know, in the order. Yeah. yeah. Re-release yeah. dwarfs. Yeah. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, that's even the style of the book, yeah. No, no, well, it's, uh, anyway, we'll see if people pick them up. So, Andrew, you were doing some scheming on it. Are they, like, is this something with, you've got, how many times have you bought a Skaven army again? Uh, well, now I've got my third, yeah. <laughs> so, so are these, is, is uh, are you going to be in the market for these guys or half the boxes? Oh, on I've got Facebook about marketplace, we don't know. 150 clan rats, I reckon, right, currently. So you won't need them. Giant rats are pretty good. I need, I need plenty of giant rats. They're actually not mm -hmm. too bad in the in the new book. So, yeah. Oh, oh he's the Jezels too. Forgot about that. But yeah, mm. I think we saw these last week. Yeah, got oh, plenty Jezels of are always fantastic. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Good. Well, I mean, it, it, the other rumor that's been going around, though, is that with the scope of the project being changed, that um, oh, we will we'll be getting a sort of general's handbookish type treatment. I don't know if that means, you know, every six months, but um, if they no, are I indeed going to bring out another one, then that might help bring some of these up to speed, maybe. I don't know. But they're probably yeah. not going to touch the legacy armies. I, I'd like that a general's rule clarification book. 
<laughs> yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Probably needs that, yeah. I think that'd kill it. If they came out and started doing, like, some mm. six monthly or whatever, like that, that'd just kill it. Like, yeah, the, it, it I, don't, I don't think... Yeah. Mm. Well, that's uh, it. They, well, they, they can't release the models, you know. We're, yeah, here yeah. in Australia, we only just start getting our orcs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's going to... Oh, yeah, I, well, I'm, I'm not saying it's going to come next six months, but I'm just saying... No, that, I, I, yeah, I don't that's think what they, they're saying. I, well, how, how quickly can they turn that around? We know that yeah. the lead times in production are a couple of years. So, you know, okay, it did well at the beginning of 2024. Yeah, so cool. now it's 2020. Maybe, maybe Christmas 2020, <laughs> yeah, six or seven, we'll, we'll see some sort of, you know, update or release because they've just released the Six Army by that stage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I guess, I mean, the down, uh, yeah, I mean, that's true. But then the other thing is if it's just a book, that brings some things, clarifications. I wonder if that's a possibility or not, or adds, I don't know, some more tournament, like specific tournament support. Mm. I don't know. Like, it seems like they're trying to do that a little bit with the other game systems, you know, like yeah. um, well, providing I, I, tournament I, I, support packs and stuff. So I wonder if that'll be a thing. That would be good, or at the very least, uh, updates in White Dwarf, although, mm. although there was no... <laughs> I was going to get the 500th edition or something and then someone was saying that there's just literally no old world or fantasy or anything in it which is kind of funny given that it's called white dwarf and yes there is the white dwarf isn't it oh yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> i'm sure there's have to be at least a two-page spread uh, on the white dwarf picture. yeah it's a lie uh, it's a big lie yeah. yeah anyway it is what it is cool Okay, uh, well, that's all we probably need to talk about with these guys. Let's uh, jump onto some hobby before we get into one of our two main topics. I guess the other thing we are going to cover, um, and I can't remember if I said this at the beginning of the show, is the our second part of our Hits, Misses, Favourites, which is just, I think mm. we're going to cover the, where did we get to the, probably most of the magic part, not the laws and mm. stuff, but the magic phase description. And mm. then I think it through to the strategy phase in that in the rule book. So just have a chat about some of those things that we've found that we either like or hate or yeah. or what our favorite bits are. So, so hobby wise, Andrew, do you want to kick that one off or do you want, or is oh. yours, you've got a special, oh. do you want to go last? I, I, then? No, what, no, what? I'll, I'll, I'll go off first. We'll either go okay. off with a bang or crickets. Um, <laughs> so apologies to people. I, 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 I've Listening. got, I've got a little, a little <laughs> sneak, sneak picture of, something that might help explain what okay. what's been going on with my hobby so anyway <laughs> first of all um we've got uh well me me and gomo got a game in so if you guys have been subscribing to the channel which i, I know you all do um mm -hmm. you would have definitely seen and watched our game uh so yeah that, multiple times yeah, yeah that's that's it. It. and shed it to all your friends, <laughs> friends. <laughs> told your wife about it that's yeah that's it that's it yeah. Yeah. um yeah. So yeah, that that took up a fair chunk of my hobby because um, I was going undead and I had to put all my zombies, all twenty thousand of them, into the little adapter trainers. Sabo adapters. Yeah, it took forever. <laughs> um, and yeah, I was doing some. Re you, you know, when you unbox an army, you've had like in a bit of storage and yeah, just the n the normal breaks and bits and pieces yeah. so that took a bit of time up um i'm still going with all my dwarves um rebasing um so i'm doing that then i started scheming as i do because i can't focus on one bloody thing at a time <laughs> on these rats and then i started looking into rebasing my skaven um i just did an assessment of it the other day uh so i'll see how i go with that i, I think it's just going to be too much work considering um but yeah the the big thing um which i spoke to gummo about and josh obviously they've seen the picture so if you did tune in last week which you obviously all did because you all subscribe and share this to your family and friends and love it so much you would have heard me ramble on about like i am right now about my addiction to purchasing miniatures and armies and buying armies and then selling armies and then buying the exact same army and then selling the exact same army and purchasing the same army again over the years. Yeah. So Do I have this problem, Ken, Kenny, or, or not oh, really? What? No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. You, you paint no, every I'm figure you've got before you buy the next one? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I, I have um, matured and I only buy what I can handle nowadays. Uh -huh. But I still Ooh. have the, the thousands of miniatures I purchased the 
20 previous years, though. Right. Oh, nice. So, yeah, Sorry, I Andrew, don't, keep I going. Don't get rid of much. <laughs> anyway, so I've, I went out and I um, uh, I made a purchase. <laughs> I saw the picture of that. Yep. Yeah. Even even after there was like so much of me saying, you know, I need to not make a purchase and I need to stop doing this and this is an addiction. I've got a problem. I've just got rid of a large Britannian force, and then on Facebook Marketplace the other day, a good bloke from Moor Tribes um, up Maitland Way, uh, Nathan, put on for sale. Lowe's, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, a hefty. Yeah, he, he's got the same addiction that I do. <laughs> put on a hefty <laughs> force of Britannians for a little over a hundred bucks. The man, I couldn't help myself. I could not help myself. I saw it. The FOMO kicked in and mm-hmm. I got on the message messenger and then I sent it off and he's like, yeah, I'm waiting for another guy, but you know, he hasn't got back to me. So anyway, we made a deal and then I, I worked it out. I'm like, this, this isn't my fault. You know what it is? I've got, I've got oh. this bloke, this bloke <laughs> sitting on hey. my shoulder, the little devil. On my little shoulder. Little devil with a heart on yeah. for a Bretonian box. With his little Bretonian yeah. box. Yeah. <laughs> little and he's whispering. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's pouring honey in my ears. Just yeah. you know, nice. hey. warm and viscous Actually, at the very least. Yeah, this can it was. be the uh, yeah, this can be the warm. YouTube thumbnail too for the, this guy. <laughs> for the video. So the community was, guidelines this breaks. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he talked me into it, this bloke. Um you know, it, I was losing money if I didn't get it. So yeah. it's it's have the you, little have you named this guy? Yet, no, but he's definitely employed by Games Workshop. I work that out. <laughs> They're in cahoots. I yeah. think he gets some sort of a kickback for you know <laughs> worldwide. Is is so, whispering in all these people's ears? Did you censor this percentage. and put the Bretonian box, or did you find this? I had to image? censor it. It wasn't oh, censored. I'm like, well, oh, what okay. if we have little kids? Yeah, you might yeah. think we're sort of some old weird guys hanging around GW yeah, shops. We've already, yeah, we've know? already talked about pedophiles <laughs> and GW. Yeah, we've got uh, direct So, uh, cool. no. Okay. Yeah, so that's... This image is going to ensure that this uh, this uh, show tonight is going to need that that new uh, introduced um, adult verification. Oh, question. system. Yeah, we have to prove your age <laughs> to watch it. Yeah. That's all right. But, but yeah, you I, I made it. Are you over 18? <laughs> Yeah, I made sure the censored bit. It censored most of it out, but there was just mm. enough left so that you could work out what was going on. It's more oh, than six inches. That's the thing. So, yeah. 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 Well, it's all relative. This dude's only six inches tall. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, like, Andrew, Andrew, Andrew. Before we go too far ahead from this, yeah. Are, are you going to have that little devil miniature in the army? I might. I might in that Bretonian. I don't know how I'm going to fix it. Fit it in, but yeah, I might have to. Well, look, they're, they're encouraging you to have unit fillers. Yeah, I, I think he is in the mid, like a, a grail reliquary rather than a, a dead mm. knight. They could be all be mm. you know, carrying a, a horny devil. That's true. That's it. Mm. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. So well, you can hear ben, a my kids are printing stuff next to me. So if you can hear that. Well, me oh, and Gomo yeah. were talking about a basement <laughs> army for the for the studio <laughs> army. So, yeah, and I, I believe do? Gomo's Gomo's <laughs> had this little character on his. <laughs> On his oh, shoulder. I don't know what happened. Pouring honey day. or was, some, uh, uh, warm well, someone's talking. <laughs> I mean, we talked about Beastman and then you, Nelly, bought that Beastman army the other day and I was like, oh, I'll do it. And then you didn't. And then I don't know what happened. I was just, I was out and then someone else on a podcast was talking about Beastman and I just went, oh, they said, oh, the Vanguard box, it's still available in the shops. And I said, is it? I haven't seen it in like Frontline box. or anything. So I searched for, you know, whatever it is, Beastman Vanguard box or whatever. Mm-hmm. Gap Games have five of them. And I went, oh, 150 bucks each. I'll get two. <laughs> and then sent it to Andrew just after he'd told me he bought the Bretonians. I was like, oh, we have problems. So, so Josh. Yes. He's yeah, yeah. getting around. He's getting yeah. around. <laughs> this little thing. Yeah. Meanwhile, Josh is shaking his head going, you two, God's sake, just focus on one thing. <laughs> well, Josh has to say that because he's been paying that Bretonian army for like 20 years. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, well, we need to, yeah, you know, you've you got to get a good buy when you get one. I just, I, I my, yeah, I, I don't even justify it. I just bought them anyway. So <laughs> there's, no, mm. there's no reason. What have you got up to, uh, Kendall, hobby-wise, been doing stuff? 
Well, I, I started out all enthusiastic um, in the old world and I uh, went to paint my, my third or fourth orc army. And uh, I petered out around about a thousand points. You know, I, I got the, the black orcs done. I, I got the, the night goblins done. I got some chariots done. And I thought, you know what? I've actually got so many painted armies. I should just be playing the mm. game instead. Yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't need to prove anything to anyone. <laughs> but um, no, I've just been, uh, I recently got myself like an FDM printer and just been printing lots of terrain, you know, this, that, and the other. I, I've got so much terrain now. I've done about 10 kilos in the last uh, month or so. Um, you yeah, know, just for club and of course, yeah, but mm. the castle coming up. So I thought, um, you know, I better start updating the terrain. It's it's all, you know, the original stuff we started with like 12 years ago, which after that was all donated out of uh, other people's collections at that time. So, yeah, you can only, you know, do maintenance for so long before that, uh, yeah, that styrofoam just starts to melt away and yeah. all, the, all the corners being knocked off that hill makes it more of a ball than a hill now, you know. <laughs> Um, I've, I mean, I'm, I've got a 3D printer coming, but it's not an FDM one. But um, mm. I did think of that. How much are they usually like what, for? Because they're obviously better for those bigger terrain pieces and stuff. Yeah, like they the are. Way. That's exactly why I got it, just for terrain yeah. pieces and you know, uh, trophies. Because I keep printing these trophies in my resin printer. And it's, yeah. you know, each of these trophies has costing me like $25, you know, $30 in resin alone. <laughs> yeah. So... Whereas, you know, it's almost a trophy. I, I, could, I could do it for like eight or nine dollars <laughs> in FDM. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the one I've got at the moment is uh, the Elegoo Neptune 4 Pro. And I got that with 10 kilos of res uh, with F of FDM or PLA uh, for, I think, sub 600 Australian. Yeah, cool. Uh, okay. Delivered. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I read all the reviews and lots of people poo pooed it. And, and uh, you know, it was, but it was like six or nine months after it originally came out. So there was some firmware updates and, and I'm not, you know, inexperienced uh, with printing. Mm. been printing now for, you know, four or five years. So um, I was able to get everything working fine. I, I, like one mishap at one stage, but otherwise, you know, no more than a couple hundred grams of uh, resin, you know, lost. Yeah. Uh, everything else yeah. is printed fine. Or PLA, I should say. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm only just starting to uh, understand the differences, but yeah, no, that's cool. No, I, that's sort of one of the more exciting things I've thought. If I do get mm. into it and get all the different printers, like just I don't know, just good, good quality scenery. I think it's pretty cool. Mm. There's so much options out there. It, so, it is. Yeah. Um, the quality yeah. nowadays is fantastic. Like yeah. when I started printing five or six years ago, it was off that uh, the uh, Audi printer. If you may recall, Audi came mm. out with some FDM printers they were selling on one of their Saturday specials. Yeah, and uh, yeah, at, at oh, Newcastle Legion, yeah. I think four or five of us actually got them. They're like three hundred fifty dollars each, and you know, we should, it was, it's actually pretty expensive for what they were because they were crap. Mm. Um, <laughs> and uh, I think everyone at club ended ended up giving them to Dan Collins. He ended up with like five at one stage, but because of the quality of them, only one was ever working. Right. So it'd just be a matter of doing a on fits. the other four. Yeah. And, and kept getting one working, then, you know, just cycling <laughs> through as they broke down or some part failed. Yeah. Uh, we we got good. quite a bit of terrain out of that, but, you know, the, the quality wasn't yeah. anywhere near what this is. This yeah. is, uh, like, I'm doing this. Is at that a one blast crater you got plates. there? Or what is that? Is that more of but a... It's actually a bubbling pit. Oh, Ooh. right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so good. whether it may be blood or mm. ooze yeah. or, you know, lava. A mm. more pit. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like your imagination it's takes it. you to. Yeah. That's right. Ask your horny oh, devil cool. about what this what this is. <laughs> oh, warm. oh no, no, actually, I won't bring up what I saw on a on a heavy metal Facebook did you, uh, group. I'll have to share that one day. The back of that what? rhino. Have you guys seen that with the rhino down? Yeah, yeah. The back. Have you seen that one, Kendall, with the ass? No. No. It's, no. it's on. Yeah, it's sorry, heavy it's metal. Sorry. It's one of those, we're um, like heavy. We're talking Evie Metal Painting Group, not Evie Metal, the, the, the magazine I used to No, no, read Evie, and it's get, the Evie um, Metal about. group, okay. but yeah. I think they had to change. Did it, get, did it get overtaken or something? So they all went to this other Evie Metal group or something, but someone yeah. posted yeah, a yeah, uh, there, there awesome was looking Chaos Space Marine, 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 Marine Rhino or something with its <laughs> ramp down, but it's like a full, I don't know, wreck. Let's just say it's Black a wreck. It was very well. Up. <laughs> it's actually really good, but it's fucking disturbing. <laughs> it's 
Yeah, this is definitely an MA rated uh, episode now. No, anyway, no, I said fine. I wasn't going to bring it up, but I did. Uh, cool. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, that's good, man. That's uh, now you're making me want to get my a second printer before I've even got my first one. So. Well, my, the only advice I can give to anyone who wants to start printing is find someone who currently prints and get them to show you. Hmm. Um, like there's yeah. all these little small things. Like you can watch all the YouTube videos you want, which go through all the steps of what you should be doing. But ultimately, these people who are showing you this you know, are well experienced, you know, yeah. they, they've been doing it forever. So I'll use terminology you don't understand. They'll make assumptions about you knowing how to level or, you know, how to mix your resins and things like that. Um, and really just having someone take you through is one yep. of the best things you can do. Um, I didn't have that, uh, unfortunately. So I had to figure it all out for myself, <laughs> but uh, I know a number of people, I know a number of people who've started up and I've always offered, if you want help, I'll come out and show you. We'll do yep. one simple print, get it started. And then you'll know, you know, you'll, you'll have the confidence, I think is really the thing. Having the confidence to know that what you're doing is the correct thing and not second guessing yourself and, and causing mishaps. Yeah, cool, Matt. Uh, awesome mm. tips, man. Thank you. And maybe I'll, mm. I'll take you up on that. Also, um, like I'm, was it Todd uh, Lloyd's just around the corner too? And he's, I think he's got three under his house going all the time <laughs> as well. So I'm definitely, uh, there's a few people. And then Josh is obviously, he does it, but he's in Melbourne. So it's a bit hard for him to come yeah. around. But, um, uh, we'll get it. We'll get it up, and then Andrew and I'll have even more stuff that we won't be able to paint. So yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a new anyway. hobby unto itself. Yeah, I know that's what yeah. they'll say too. Maybe it'll stop us buying figures. That's that's what I'm thinking. No, it probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> it's a stupid reason. Uh, oh well. Uh, cool. Any other hobby, or I'll just jump onto mine. If uh, not no, yeah, yeah, no, please much, go ahead. But, um, I just print a lot of stuff. Go ahead. Yeah, cool. Yeah, no, well, like Andrew already said, we got our game in, so check that out if you haven't. Um, that was a very bad, uh, well, eh, I would bring it up, but it wasn't a great result uh, for me. But uh, anyway, it was a fun game, though, like with the Troll Horde, just to try it out. I hadn't tried mm -hmm. any of them. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, it wasn't a very, my army was a bit proxied or unpainted because I hadn't got around to doing my trolls and all that yet, but it was, no, it was a good game. Um as a result, I've started painting some stone trolls, which I put a video out on good. YouTube over the weekend as a mm. bit of a, how I painted him. So again, smooth. check that out if you guys want. Um, and then I started what Andrew's been doing, which I went, I've been, my Tomb Kings, are, you know, I've got enough Tomb Kings and I'm starting to like put more skeletons together and all that. But at some point you go, man, how I'm getting sick of painting bone. And I've got the, all my orcs sitting there all on the wrong bases. And I'm like, at some point I need to get them on the right ones. So I've started snapping the uh, black orcs off and then putting the night goblins on the black orc base. And then re obviously rebasing the uh, black orcs up onto the 30s. So I guess it's just a matter of going through that now. Which How's fun. that those black orcs going? Because I know um, one of their legs was glued on separately, wasn't it? Like I remember when I assembled mine, wasn't don't they have like a, a leg and a hip? And then you had the, yeah, the other leg sure. you had the glue back on. So have you lost any legs? Have you no, any not legs? yet. I've, I've been, it's all because it's, I mean, I've used plastic glue on all the actual figures. So I think it's pretty good at holds. But what I'm finding is the problem is I, we've talked about this ages ago on the pod. Like I always plastic, I used to always plastic glue the, like that figure onto the base and then paint the base. And if it's like that, I need to cut the thing off. I just can't snap it yeah. off. But I'm finding about yeah. half my black orcs I'd super glued. So they'd be like, oh, yep, this oh, will come off yeah, and it'll snap, snap off. off. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah. the, and I'm finding that with the night goblins, these are the old slaughter bases. So mm -hmm. I don't even know if I plastic glued. They might have been super glued yeah. as well. So I'm able to sort of just reef them out of there most of the time. If not, I just cut it off because it's 20 mil base. I'm not going to use it again. Well, yeah. not these guys anyway. I've got enough other night goblins <laughs> if I need to play sixth. Um, but yeah, so no, I haven't had any broken black orcs yet, but I still have about 15 to go. So we'll see. Because now I'm into the ones that are plastic glued. I'm like, damn it, they're not snapping off. <laughs> so <laughs> get out the saw. A bit of fun. And what I'm doing is I've, uh, again, I'll be able to get this when I've got my 3D printer, but I've, um, I've got heaps of these like little mushrooms and fungus and stuff that I bought mm -hmm. on Etsy. So obviously I'll be able to print them out myself at some point. So where the old black orcs legs were, <laughs> I'm putting the fungus and stuff and then I'll just patch around it and paint them up and, oh, okay. and then mix so you, in the you, old squigs yeah. as well into the unit. So I'll have a little bit more variety, I guess. Right. So the night goblins are graduating to the, the black orcs the black old orc bases. Base. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, at least for that's this good patch, thing. but yeah. Oh, <laughs> 
I, I will yeah. say I've not had success in you know taking models off bases. Like I I, I plastic glue all mine to the bases. So yeah, really, that's... it's it's a matter of getting the pliers in there and, yeah, and twisting it. it, yeah, reefing it, snapping it, and then cutting off yeah. the um the tab that bits are left on. And oh, yeah, well, yeah. that's I to be honest, that's probably going to be I'm I'm almost to that point where I think everything left is going to be plastic glued. I'm like, oh, damn it! For a second there, I was like, this is going quick, and then I'm like, oh no, yeah, not yeah. Anymore. So. <laughs> But yeah, I figured um, I was going to redo all these squigs, but I've got like heaps of the squigs from AOS and, and I like the look of them better. So I'm like, I might just paint some new squigs and use my old one. Like I'll keep a back bunch of my old ones on 20s just in case I do play mm-hmm. six and I'll just use a few of them dotting around the, the night goblins. Because the problem with the night goblins, they're so small on the 25 that I feel like it yeah needs something yeah. else. Yeah. You know. So I might do some unit oh, filler yeah. ones or, you know, things like that. I don't know. Some yeah. units are looking fantastic when they're like, you know, they've got mm. a bit of space to swing their arms. But uh, the, your, the things that you envision as hordes all being in neat rows with great separation between them. Yeah. It's a little bit a bit too weird. disciplined for my life. Yeah. 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 Especially, yeah. A night goblin rabble shouldn't be so structured. But yeah. But anyway, I figure um, if I can get the funny, the, sad or not, the, the, if you can get the night goblins and black orcs on the bases, you basically have an uh, old world competitive orc army, I guess, um, at least at the moment. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can agree that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, I'll give that a go. And uh, and Andrew did say he wants, what did you say, Andrew? You wanted me to, I don't know why you asked me this because I can't play the game very well, but come up with a really good counter to your dwarf list. He wanted, yeah, yeah. Thro- I need, throw, I need a... throw as much against the wall as possible. Yeah, yeah. Just, find the weaknesses besides mm. the fact that they only move three inches um but yeah i'm sure the I'm oh, sure but they charge gonna... nine andrew yeah yeah <clears> yeah <throat> so i was actually that maybe that's a good um segue into into castle assault though on the whole don't be a dick and and stuff because i guess mm. one thing i was thinking andrew was um if i do do orcs then maybe i'll just bring a shit ton of 10 unit night goblins in marching column throw them in your face and shoot 16 or whatever <laughs> fanatics at you. And I'll say, well, I'm pretty sure that'd be a don't be a dick list if I put that in the car. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's yeah, so there it depends are things I've been want. seeing that uh, are pretty yeah. dickish. Yeah. 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 Anyway, well, do you want to, is that, Andrew, you got anything else to cover there or did you want to get, should we go on to Castle? No, no, Castle. Castle it away. Yeah, cool. Okay. Well, we talked about last week, Castle Salt being our awesome Newcastle based uh, well, now old world at least this year uh, fantasy tournament in August. What is it? August ten and eleven? I think it is. August tenth and eleven. Yep. Yeah, you're the TO of that and the War Master oh. as well. Are you TO of old world? And then someone yeah, else does yeah, War Master. Yeah. I, I always oh. pick the the, dish, the game I want to play. I'll right. TO that, and then I'll find someone else for anything else we play. So uh, right. this year at Castle Salt, we're playing um, you know the old world uh, and uh, War Master Revolution. Which is another game I really enjoy, but uh, I'll I'll take Old World. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, in previous years it's been you know the last year it was Sixth Edition War Master and Kings of War. Um, we dropped the the Kings of War this year because there's a a, a big Kings of War tournament called Convict happening uh, oh, the week oh, yeah. after. Yeah, cool. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I do cool. like obviously they you know they launched first, and I didn't want to you know steal their thunder because mm. they they need you know people to travel uh, from around yep. Australia to really make up the good numbers. So. You don't really want to, you know, compete too much with them. But, it's not nice um, oh, yeah, well, I, I don't know. I, I was pretty late on pulling the, the hammer on the on the pistol on this one, to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, well, that's fine. Um, yeah, so, yeah, this year, Old World, why not? Um, we're seeing lots of players pretty keen who want to, who are definitely the 6th edition armies, the 7th edition armies, or 8th edition yeah. armies, and uh, are yeah, coming out. So, uh, really, the only rules we've put on this on this uh this tournament uh, uh you know you show up be nice and uh don't be a dick uh with your army list design uh you know you, obviously your your attitudes and and how you treat your opponents in the games that's fine you can do whatever the heck you want just don't be bring a dick of a list mm, um yeah you know, d-bad <laughs> don't be a dick um which is something we uh like yeah fury uh he used to run a cl- uh, club coin yeah. quite early on and it first started with us playing second edition as mature men uh, who had a, you know access to everything you could want in second edition rather than in the 90s when we played it where basically 
if you bought this uh, this unit, you used it every time because you couldn't afford it's the only one you had. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> if you could make fifteen hundred points, that was the fifteen hundred points you played every time. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so yeah, but it, that it developed from there. So basically, what we want is we want everyone to have be able to have an enjoyable game. We don't want to see lists that are going to uh, you know show up and and rather than just beat their opponent, just re- remove the you know the, the fun opponent and from the game. Yeah. 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 Which there, you know, there's been lists in sixth edition, there's been lists in seventh edition, there's been lists in eighth edition that do the exact same thing, um, and invariably they're very boring, um, and it's very sad to see them always succeed. Mm, um, so yeah. that's what I'm going to try and avoid. I've not put any other composition, um, well, I've actually not put any composition uh, restrictions in at all, aside from "Don't be a dick," which of course is uh, is all subjective, uh, <laughs> based on me <laughs> yeah. uh, and my knowledge of it. <laughs> so. Um, it's like a good game of uh, of uh, cr- uh, cards against humanity. Knowing the person you're uh, you're appealing mm. to uh, can win you the game. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> if you know that I, I like my orcs, you know that I like you know, yeah. you know certain types of lists. You could probably abuse those lists a lot more than you could the lists I don't like. Yeah, <laughs> uh, which I won't tell you what they are. You like you like you like beer too, don't you, Kendall? <laughs> yeah, I, I love beer. Yeah, yeah. There, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, that's the only really run castle salt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here's my list in the carton of beer. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, just to, to quickly give you some things that we've, you know, you've noticed. Um, really, you know, we've all heard about, you know, the the chaos lord on dragon, who's, you know, impossible to kill. You know, he, he can do whatever the heck he wants, but he's impossible to kill. So your opponents can never get the points for him. That to be a weird, weird, weird situation, uh, where it doesn't go well for you. Um. Reason I, I object to that is you're not you know is because one, it's it kills everything, but it's unkillable in return. Mm. So no one can enjoy that. You know, there's there's no chance. There's no every list doesn't have access to the same sorts of things. So there's lists that don't even have to, you know monster slain ability, monster hit the monster sword and think they're really good. You know, or there's you know certain lists that don't have uh, cannons, but you know, cannons aren't that fantastic yeah, either. Anything, yeah. Well, um, you know, you never know. In the first turn, you could roll three cannons. You know, across that you know dragon and. He could fail his his uh, what five plus armor save, his five plus ward save, and then his five plus regen save, and then you might get D three plus wound, one wounds on him. Hmm. You know, of course, which he's got what nine, ten, ten, I think it is. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that, that removes the fun out of that. But you know, he's not the only example. The other things you know you, you brought up before, you know, your your your, uh, your marching column night goblins. You know, I don't want to see, you know, large, you know, number, well, large numbers, but, you know, small units of night goblins with lots of fanatics in them each. Mm. You know, I think there should be really a hard cap for fanatics. And that's something you've seen, you know, tournaments around the world have, you know, proven is, you know, the dragon lists um, and then the night, uh, orcs and goblins with the, the large numbers of fanatics, like nine fanatics. And, you know, you can see why they won is because those fanatics just actually did well. You know, they didn't mm, double, yeah. roll doubles. Yeah. If they don't roll doubles, then there's you nothing stopping them. Yeah, you, they're non-interactive, aren't they? Yeah, that's the thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. It feels a bit rude they move in both <laughs> movement phases, but also you can deploy them in either movement phase. And yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's fine. But uh, basically, I won't, you know, I won't encourage people. I don't want to see like, more, you, know, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, but each coming out of a unit of 10 or, you know, 20 minimum, you know, night goblins. Mm. I want people to, you know, try and sell the theme before, you know, rather than just, yeah. uh, you know, in, in your, uh, over fanatic it. But, you know, the other thing, of course, you know, magic. Magic's quite effective um, in, in the old world for certain armies, but for certain, you know, uh, magic lists. And, uh, you know, I played the other day and, you know, your opponent had a level four and two level twos. And so each turn, they're probably pushing out, you know, six or seven spells against my complete lack of, you know, magic user, which is my bad, but you know the fact that they're consistently you know every phase there's you know so many magic spe- you know spells coming out so i don't want to see an overabundance of magic you know um i don't want to see you know an overabundance of uh of you know uh banshee screams or you know the, the combos this sounded of like the game production. i played last week <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I did see part of that list i did see part of that and it's another thing you've seen coming out in some of the other forms is basically it's the the zombie spam the um leadership modification and then mm. three four or even five different types of banshee screen yeah you know which there is no defense and you know the zombie I boards had yeah. i know you had three yeah i was on the lower and end of how, the <laughs> how do you feel about what do, from that game do you feel good 
like that. Uh, I wanted to just answer. see how it went. Um, yeah. And I, I honestly don't think his list was that. I mean, I, A, I played a pretty bad game, but also it was a bad match. I mean, when you've got leadership eight trolls yeah, um, going against that, it's, uh, yeah. You, you, yeah, you know. But you're getting double whammy because you were stupid yeah. leadership yes. eight trolls. Who then and then debuffed down. Five. Who were then, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who were then getting screamed and yeah. being engaged by zombies so that, you know, basically yeah. they couldn't push through. They couldn't break, you know, through to the things mm. that were, were valuable or worthwhile. Instead, um, Andrew yeah. got to pick the battles all across the board. He, he didn't have to yeah. do anything. It was he okay. Do. It was. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, but, but like, it's, it's relative. I'm not saying, yeah. you know. No, the, that's the whole right. There's different lists that can play or different strategies yeah. for sure. Yeah. Against yeah. Momo's list, you know, and, you know, and the, the nature of uh, the old world, which I've seen quite a bit, like watching a lot of games, playing a lot of games, it all turns into a, a turn two, turn three um, battle. Mm-hmm. And then it's it's clean up from, um, yeah. from those turns forward. You know, it may not be a huge cleanup. It might be, you know, just be you know, slow, you know, slow retreat sort of like sort of thing where you just try and conserve points from that point forward. But I'm not seeing these big swings happening in turn five or six. Right. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And and do you, do you think that's just the current like first version of the game? Like, is that a bad thing or and if it is it, no, if it's I'm a not, bad I'm not thing, it's a bad just, thing. Yeah. I'm just saying that you're not seeing the, you know, like these massive, like every army is actually quite flexible, mm-hmm. um, you know, with their movement and their, their uh, reforms and things like that. Whereas in the old days, you'd see that the faster list would you'd punch in, you know, against the weak points, come around um, and envelop. Now it's, you know, that there, there's very few weak points unless you've designed a list with things that can be killed in one mm-hmm. turn. Um, you know, you should be playing for you know, a solid line against someone who has something that's quite fast in comparison, but really all the games I'm seeing are all, you know, it's like you, you may have experienced this yourself in your actual games, turn two or three, it's bogged. Like mm. it hits, um, you know, someone's like, there's not much chance of it, but someone's going to win big out of that, you know, that pushing of lines against each other. And then that's it. That's, that's pretty much the game from that point forward. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I th- I, yeah. We've probably seen a little bit of that, Andrew, I guess like it definitely by turn, Three, we usually know who's who's got the mm. the upper hand by then, and it's quite yeah, you're scrambling. But having said that, like <clears throat> there was one part in the game that we just played, not to get specific on that, but whereas like, and I, it probably wouldn't have changed anything, but I totally did the combat wrong. And if I did the combat order wrong, just it's after midnight, and you're sort of just getting tired. <laughs> A unit that I could have taken out in one turn, I didn't. And if I had of, I might mm-hmm. have had at least what was it, two giants and my wolf hero. Approaching your necromancer on yeah on yeah I shot, I shot the general, I think you could still a, just yeah. gone away and you would have screamed him anyway but um, I felt like man just doing that it might have swung it it wouldn't have been well, as bad a loss you know what I mean but I just mm. I did that well, wrong that's like, fine ah. it, it comes down to experience so you need to be <laughs> yeah. playing those games you need to really you know you get, yeah. get your your one or two games in every you know couple of weeks yeah, uh, so is. that you start yeah. learning your list the the problem you guys are having now and it's something I've had as well because I've, I've played like three or four different armies out of the 20 or so games I've played is you keep switching between armies. Yeah. You, you, you're, yeah. you're only learning a bit of each one. And you know, really, you know, just like any other edition of Warhammer, a lot of it's determined in your deployment, how you've yeah. lined yourself up against your opponent, which gives you, you know, an advantage if you've lined your good things against their bad things. And, or, you know, you've, you've managed to, you know, put something that'll delay their good stuff. Um, and just remembering that, that charge order, remembering that those combat orders, um and how you want you know the game to turn out or play out or how you're going you know going to crush your opponent um uh, by <clears throat> doing these you know flanks first and then bringing it in or you know not having your your general or your high leadership or your bsb go flying off or dead before you know you start playing your other turn uh, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> nah, nah, i think right. I, yeah i think it's pretty good like what what you're doing because in a sense you you don't want to piss off a uh, junior community, which is what the old world is, by having people just taking stupid lists. Um, mm. I know some people, yeah, exactly. they're like, oh, we need to mature the data and we need to mature, you know, but mm. I, I think, like, as you've said, that there are clear abusive lists out there and, yeah, yep. you, you don't want to have somebody rock up to their first tournament getting tabled by Andrew and his shitty banshee list with zombie spam. <laughs> So, but yeah, no, hundred percent. Well, well, that's it. That's it. It's all about enjoyment. Um, you know, there there is a big uh, emphasis in uh, castle assaults for for me to get drunk. 
um, which I hope is uh, you know, something other people um, follow along with. And yep. part of that is I don't want to be having bad games as well because mm. then I become a belligerent drunk. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, no, it really is. I, I don't want to. I don't want to discourage people from taking certain types of lists. I just, mm. I just want certain elements Balance to be reined yep. in a little bit. Uh, I want people to have like an expectation that you know every game they have is going to be something they they're actually going to be part of, uh, mm. rather than something that they get to witness uh, as the, you know their army gets taken apart by something they never had a chance against. Um, you know, it, it's it's really hard to put you know definites in it. That's why I've just brought up you know fanatics, overabundance of wizards. Overabundance of um, you know multiple small units of really deadly good stuff, um, you know the chaos lords, the the high elves <clears> with two <throat> dragons, you know, <laughs> you know sort of stuff, combo charging things and and avoiding anything that can actually hurt them back. Um, mm. that, that stuff, you know, it's great, and I I, you know, I love for people to be able to use those in their friendly games. I just don't want them bringing into a, a tournament and, and and ruining someone's weekend. Because uh, you know, it, you may you may think that we're all older, more mature gentlemen now who can who can take a good beating every once in a while. But reality is, if you have a bad time, you don't really want to come back to it. Again. Yeah, that's the no, nah, totally. Yeah, mm. <clears throat> yeah. And look, it's just not. I mean, I don't know. There's probably other tournaments that you can do all that in, but Castle Assault's just yep. it's not really about that, is it? So it is that balance? I mean, yeah. it's still competitive, and I, I guess the people who want to win it will still take competitive lists. But yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll know, work their way there's around. There's nothing wrong it. with that. And, yeah, and I have to admit, um, you know, the people you see at the top, it's not just abusive lists. It, it's always people who are actually you know are putting in the hard yards, who are playing lots yeah. of games, who have learned mm. their army. So you, you'll find invariably, you know. In, in other tournaments, in other game systems, the person at the top's probably learnt, you know, their army. They probably learnt their tactics mm. really well. And so, if if they know that they're sold their list, then it's all about your opponent making a mistake. You know, mm. and your opponent may not have the experience, may not have that. that it all worked <clears> out. <throat> may not know how to deploy their army. Um, instead, they always, you know, leave something, you know, out to the left because they didn't leave enough space for it in the middle or something like that. You know, that that's that's how you what you exploit that's how you win when you've got a bit more experience i don't want the list to be you know so uh, asymmetrical yeah. that yeah you know, that people just don't have a, a look in mm. and of course about, i'll be looking um... all this, so. <laughs> no, it's all, no it's awesome what uh scenario wise just quickly i wanted to touch on because we didn't really touch on it last week um you're playing, I don't know if you know it off by heart, I do have it on the screen if, if you want to bring it up. But um, no, no, that's fine. <clears throat> you've got it out of the rule book mostly, but you've added a couple yeah. of sort of these bonus points uh, in, which I like because you're bringing in some things like table quarters and stuff. Do you want to just run us through, mm -hmm. I guess, your thoughts on that? Not not scenario by scenario, well, but just sort of what you're, you're doing there. That, that's fine. So, well, to be honest, um, I, I just wanted to encourage people to know that there was other things they could do aside from beat their opponent. Um, yeah. it, it's always important that if someone's losing or they feel like they're losing, there should be something they can still do to try and, you know, win some points back because we are using that, that graduated, you know, potentially you could get zero to 20 points. Um, yeah. and you know, one to you know, zero to 15 of that is just from killing your opponent. Uh, but then I wanted some extra bonus victory conditions just so that, you know, even though I, I know I'm losing quite a bit, I can still throw a couple of units up around the flank maybe and. And get myself a couple of extra bonus points may not get me the win may not get me the tie but at least it'll get me a couple of points just to advance my standing in the actual tournament itself mm. um but yeah to us that not everything here's you know as well thought out as you might imagine you know i'm not not some sort of wonder kind of, of a person <laughs> that can you know just pull scenarios and uh ideas yeah, yeah. down my ass they're all gold uh, yeah, the I, I mean, I like the um, unit strength stuff that you've put in here. That, like, that's unit strength ten on that one. I think this well, is unit strength. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to like, the, the, you know, certain armies have uh, access to things that other armies don't. They have the mm. access to the flying units, or have access to the um, the really fast small units or, or monsters that, could, or even ambushes that are coming from behind, mm. um, or from the sides or terrain. Um, so I, I just wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, there, there was a restriction, there, there was a, a, a tactic for people, you know, I can see that they've got nothing but units of, you know, of unit strength 10, uh, 10 itself coming at me. Great. I'll take yeah. one wound off each one. One of that, one of that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's what and I was really looking at going, oh man, you'd, you'd want to take a bit of a buffer, you know, that's the thing. Cause it's mm. unit strength 10, I, unless you bring, you know, 
cav might be a good way that you can you know bring units mm. of I don't know six or seven or eight cav. You know, you might find a lot of uh, four by two black uh, ball boys or something running around. I don't know. <laughs> that, that's yeah, yeah. fine, but you know you, you might find your opponents are always you know happy to you know, ping a couple of wounds off those units. Yeah, um, yeah, that that you change their tactics rather than you know trying to concentrate it all on that one big unit. They might go, well, I'm going to get into close combat with that big unit. I'm going to have to be, I'll be wearing it down in any case. I may as well go for those flanking forces. Um, yeah, or you know, I might want to bring my own, you know, bit of flanking force rather than just sort of one big solid fat line. Um, yeah, you know, hopefully I haven't discouraged too many dwarf players, but. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Yeah. What, what, what have they're you all, they're always heavily at this, question. Andrew? Like, are you still yeah. thinking of bringing the dwarves? I can't remember. Uh, yeah. Well, my yeah. I my dwarves mm. don't. Like, I don't. I'm not bringing any war machines. So my mm. whole point so my dwarf forward. list was yeah. just like a a bit of a combatty yeah. dwarf list. We are, like it's got yeah. shooting, obviously, because you you need to have something. Because if you do encounter a dragon, obviously you need to have a couple of troll hammers. Um, mm. But yeah, like I think it's just. I don't know. I find gun lines are pretty boring to play against anyway. So I think this is good to discourage yeah. somebody just sitting in the corner and shooting at you. And that's good thinking as well, because I haven't seen gun lines succeed that much. Um, you know, my early experimentations in my empire, uh, I brought a, a, a null list against my friend, Steve Gibb, uh, which is, you know, two hell blasters, two cannons, two mortars, uh, 10 outriders, 10, you know, two lots of 10, oh, you know, uh, wow. yeah. hand gunners with hockle and long rifles and two engineers, you know, and the engineers are seeing these bubbles of, you know, war machines around them, uh, prioritizing what, sh what they're going to reroll and things like that. And it just wasn't a fun game. That's the only, that's the only shooting list that I've seen go really well. Um, yeah. otherwise I've seen shooting do very little because, you know, just like in eighth edition, you're not seeing lots of small units, uh, quite, you know, you're not, not an abundance of them. You're yeah. seeing a lot more ranked up units and you're seeing a lot more um, aggressive play from your opponents. So as I said, it seems to be every two, you know, second or third turn, the combat's joined. The game's being determined mm. now. Yeah, um, yeah. You're not having those um, games where you're able to ping shots off things for like four or five turns and, you know, wear them down and then crush them. Mm. I'm not seeing those yeah. games yet. Mm. Oh. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. <clears throat> no, looking forward to... Um... I haven't looked through these scenarios to that point where I'm like, okay, now I've got to start thinking about you know, how, how I've just on my list to <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, which is which is going to be. Um, I mean, and on one hand, I think, do I give a crap because I just want to go and have fun as well? So that's partly oh. the other thing. But when you see a lot of this unit strength ten requirement, I'm like, yeah, I probably have to definitely think about it. Um, because well, yeah, nice you have to, to make some consideration too. towards it because yeah. yeah, you don't want to. You want to be able to sit there and go, oh, I just, I'm losing this game, but I can still grab yeah, some yeah. points back. Yeah. Um, and because I know what the scenario is or, or because my opponent's not playing for, to the scenario, I know how I can get around here. And he thinks he might be winning, you know, getting a draw or a small win, but I know I can actually beat him uh, by just yeah. holding him here and, and, and exploiting the, the scenarios that are here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, That's good. good. <clears throat> so it you're is playing... like... Um... Oh, sorry, you go. Oh, I was just going to say, like, it was because we just played the ones at the book at um, uh, Shark on. Um, so mm -hmm. with uh, Matt's tournament, I think that was really good because it was nice and plain being one of your first tournaments. But I think people are going to be played enough now where you can sort of expand on the scenarios. Where else, obviously, yeah, that was quite junior. So you probably didn't want to, you're so busy just trying to remember the rules. You didn't want yeah. Yeah, 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 too yeah. much of a scenario <laughs> where else. Well, that, that's why they're all the, the yeah they're all the, the the battles from the actual book itself with just these extra mm. things. Uh, the only yeah. exception is the the scenario the game two there, um, which is the break. Oh gosh, I can't remember what it's called breakpoint. That's it. Uh, yeah, breakpoint. Yeah. Um, which I've just modified. So rather than your army, you know, it stops at twenty five percent. It's just bonus points. So it's it's really just a normal mm. game um, with the bonus points as the percentage of your opponent's army that you've killed, um, which you know that's works good. for both players. Yeah. So, you mm -hmm. know, even though you could get wiped out, your opponent, it's, it's a pyrrhic victory. Uh, mm. <laughs> like a, um, and, uh, you know, they've lost most of their army as well. So you're still going to get your five bonus victory points against them. Uh, yeah. yeah. Or, you know, that's, that's really that's, good. They've, you know, yeah. Mm. So, you know, I want people to, like, I want to see scores where everyone's only, rather than ending 20 zip, um, you know, mm. you know, which, you know, you'd see in most tournaments, you used to see that, like, at least a third of the, 
your opponents or third of the each round was a 20 zip win for someone i want to see yeah. it more you know we've been five Something or six great. points yeah. um between yeah. each each player yeah yeah hopefully yeah no, no that is that's interesting yeah. it'd be good yeah well you're Are not you... you're not out of the game if you have a if you have like a not out of the tournament if you have like a bit of a shocker as such because well, yeah. well that's it that's something else we've, we've been seeing like I, i've been running these tournaments for quite a while now and i want to try and encourage it that's you know that, that there shouldn't be someone who just goes five games maximum points um you know there should be you know, even the best players should only be getting you know two-thirds of the points sort of mm-hmm. thing um but yeah, there's always exceptions <laughs> like you yeah. can't stop everyone <laughs> i don't i don't want to stop everyone i just want to make sure that it's not a game of uh uh, like the modern Star Wars sorts of games, where it's 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 winners and losers. You, yep. you win, yep. great. You lose, you're out. Um, yeah, I want everyone to see or feel like they've still got a chance for you know a podium or or at least something. But uh, if you ever come to a castle of soul or any tournaments I run, everyone really gets a prize in the end. Mm-hmm. I try to you know spread things around. Like I, I let the the winners get you know a nice little trophy, but really I, I want everyone to to walk away with something in hand or you know at the least. You know, a good time. Yeah. yeah they are. Oh well, yeah, that's gonna happen. Very good sure. time. <laughs> <clears throat> so we got. Do, do you think uh, how's how's it going? Like I think last week it's only weekend, and I think you're at, you were hitting was it hitting thirty or something signed up and paid or was it thirty? Um, yeah, we've got uh, forty, no, thirty nine oh. players for Old World now. Wow, um, okay. as of today, so so like ten days uh, since announcement, um, and uh, yeah, we've got War Master Revolution. It's got eight players, but. That's fine. That's the way Warmaster runs. We get about 20 players for Warmaster. I'll be very happy. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a yeah. fantastic game. I encourage everyone if they want to have a game, make sure you look for someone to play. The uh, Revolution Rules really made a, a really enjoyable game, which is a lot more uh, balanced, I think, ultimately. Was, uh, is and there's a lot of good. <clears throat> that's one of the uh, things I could be using my 3D printer for. Hey, there's a lot of good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Warmaster ones. So. There's some fantastic designs mm. out there. Um, yeah. And of course, yeah. it's. Of course, it's, it's abandoned wear, um, just like mm. Epic Armageddon and and it dips Titanic is walking its way towards. Uh, <laughs> you know, you can, you can go out there and you can you design, you can print anything you want. Um, you know, there's lots of different designs out there. It's all available to you. You know. Mm. Yeah. You so world, what what world, um world. what army are you bringing, Kendall? As a I guess, are you being a buy buster or a? Yeah, yeah. I've I entered myself as a buy buster. Um, I'll just be bringing my my empire. Okay. Um, a little bit of this, that, and the other, I think. Um, although not, not the gun and... line. <laughs> no, not, not that gun line. I, I like. I, I played that to break it. To be honest. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Just to see, yeah. <clears throat> just to see what you know what you could do with that. Um, mm. But you know, I, I, you know, I still like you know, you know, demi griff knights. Um, you know, unit of swordsmen, all that sort of stuff. Still, you know. But the only thing I've I've been thoroughly disappointed with that I've been experimenting with is just straight up knights. My, my poor Empire Knights are just not, you know, uh, not playing Punch well. Yeah. Just Empire Knights. Three plus armor save, toughness three. I have bloody goblins on squigs popping up with their uh, Ruby Ring of Ruin and, and wiping the unit out. The you know? Yeah. Because <clears throat> yeah, it's three plus armor save. You know, it's, it's good for space marines. But my Empire Knights used to be like a one plus armor save. What's going on there, man? Oh, my God. Yeah, it's dropped a lot, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah, that's the, yeah, no, you're probably well, right. Like, well, it, there's it, a they couple feel of... very vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this game, it, look, it's version one. Like I'd feel like there's certain, there's a lot of things that took nerfs, but there was like multiple of it, you know, like the war machines, mm-hmm. you know, the mm-hmm. war machines went down, um, but the wounds went up for the, you know, the dragons and then, you know, all this sort of stuff. And then the armor saves mm-hmm. came down and suddenly it's like, I don't know, it's like you, they didn't have to change all that. So maybe over time they've yeah. got more room to play around with some of that in the future versions maybe. Um, cause you're certainly uh, not seeing war machines like you used to. Um, no, no, I, I think war machines still have their place. I think, uh, it's just, uh, it's the current zeitgeist, mm-hmm. if I'm using yeah. that correctly, um, of people thinking that war machines aren't, you know, what they used to be, but I think people might have been abusing war machines previously. They, they, they were too mm-hmm. good in eighth edition, um, especially when you, you didn't have to guess range anymore. Uh, you just play, placing a template down, you're just scattering or you're doing the bounce. I think that was too good to be honest. I, th- I think that uh, really, you know, made them, you know, overpowered. And I, I think this is just a, a drawback to, you know, yeah. a bit of a semblance of balance. I, I don't think war machines should determine a game. I, I think they should be mm. just like uh, your, your 10 archers over here or your, your, your bolt throw or something like that. 
they should be something that helps pepper the army army uh helps uh you know reduce the effectiveness of something so then you can actually crush it with you know close combat mm. you know just the same as magic i don't think magic should you know be the thing that determines the game i think it should be something that supplements the game you know just like shooting well or, it feels like maneuvering. <clears throat> things like the dragons and stuff um well anything with these high wounds and even chariots and stuff now that you know you can get easy get seven eight wounds on a you know mm -hmm. your lord by putting him on a chariot um I feel like whatever they balance, it just needs to be that you should be able to like chip off wounds off that every turn, you know, so when you yeah. are fighting with them, they got to think about what they want to engage with. But if you, it's a bit of a problem if, you know, like the Tomb King one or the Chaos Knights, the Chaos Lord on the dragon, they could still get into combat and they have still full wounds. And then you're like, oh shit, this yeah. is going to Well, that's it. I've had, I've had a couple of games now, even against Weaven Riders, you know, they're not anywhere near as, as impressive or intimidating, but. You know, I still yep. charged a yep. unit of three demigriff knights into a, a weave and, and you know, I come away with nothing. Uh, yeah. the weaving yeah. then eats <clears throat> yeah, but uh, on the other hand, the weaving just has you know, the, the orc boss just has one round bad round of combat, and there's a good chance he'll break, or mm. you know, at least you'll, you'll push him away. Whereas the, the you know, the chaos lord and the, 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 the TK lord just never do anything. Like it, you, yeah. the best thing you can you know, hope for is they, they they fall back and you know that, you know they get pushed back they give ground, um, yeah. which gets you nowhere. Yeah. Uh, um, you know I think the yeah. best tactic against those things is you feed them stuff that you know you can, you know that you don't care about, yeah. and try and you know ensure that well there's six turns in a game, uh, first turn let's make sure nothing can charge, uh, it can can't charge anything. Let's uh, second turn let's make sure it can only charge something I don't care about. And then you know, try to reduce what it kills. Um, and that's not really yeah. a fun tactic. That's a you know, cool. I get to chase the other thousand points of your army, Just mitigate you know, your my, loss. Mm. Even and it's hard with those army, but from you can't even pin yeah. them down, like because yeah, if you uh, yeah. they just they don't follow up, then they can fly yeah. off again. So it, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, you just hope, have to hope they you know, fail lots of leadership tests for their reforms and things. Yeah, yeah, which happens. Which I do twice on no my Sphinx. Do. Trying to <laughs> remember that Andrew yeah. with my out in the flank with my sphinx on your uh dwarves and the amount i think at twice i've failed a leadership like redirect so that's just they just going the wrong way or he's just facing the wrong way for a turn was this like a flying sphinx <laughs> yeah this yeah the flying ones yeah, yeah. i i played uh, uh my friend dave oh, is andrew uh, locked Saturday up night. he had two we might have lost andrew oh yeah yeah, yeah. two <laughs> two two flying sphinxes yeah yeah that, think... like wow i didn't know they fly like i um I, I know the model had wings on it. Uh, well, you probably never saw it in eighth half the time. I don't know. Maybe no, I, I didn't really. But, yeah. But, you know, Sorry, I thought, you oh, dropped cool. off there for a wings. Like, mm. wings great. Good for them. But then the bloody things fly nine inches or something yeah. like that. Like, what yeah. the heck? Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. Lucky they're out of a plank where I had stuff I didn't care about. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah. No, well, actually, uh, uh, I don't even know if this is the uh, tactic discussion or not to bring it up, but I was talking to Andrew about this after I played his zombies where I was like, um, Actually, it was your graveguard, wasn't it? I went in with my giant, two giants into it and like wiped a heap of his unit. And then his next turn, he just throws them all back again. Yeah, and I had to do it all again. And then I yep. was thinking, because I'm used to playing Tomb Kings, I'm not on the other side of it. I'm like, hang on. Yep. Maybe the tactic is never to charge a big undead nope. unit like that. Let it charge you because then you've got two rounds of combat before they get to do it a a heal and you can probably yeah. like get rid of them you know it's all these yeah, little yeah. things right. i don't know if it would work but yeah no no you're not wrong so i played tomb guards uh, tomb kings the other day and, and i found the turn i really made the difference was um when they charged me in their turn mm. and so then i beat them in their turn and then i had my turn to, to follow up and you and could really even charge more in and yeah yeah, yeah that, that's just, right yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my yeah. my opponent knew that, so he he actually just parked his guys right in front of me and said, "Yep, yeah, someone's going to your initiative when you come in," sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's it's a great tactic. It's a great way of thinking about it. I knew about it for, uh, you know, initiative bonuses and chariots. You know, you want to get close to it, and stop them getting those yeah. impact hits. Totally, I never yeah. thought about it. If um, yeah, if you're undead, you just you don't care. You've got you're mm. going to have like uh, you know, three or four leadership tests in the next turn, uh, with re rolls. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You look back. I know. Yeah, yeah so it's like, yeah, one of those things to think about for sure. Yeah. Cool. Um, do we want to jump on to quickly run through our other topic and then we can close out the show pretty much? If you got, you've got sure. another 20 minutes on you. Oh, I, I sure do. I, I don't want to be rude, but I'm just going to go grab another drink. Go for it, man. Take that. 
do that. I'll get the screen share up. Hang on. Where are we? If he's gone Where this far, we? yeah. He's, yeah. Paul Kendall yeah. usually goes to bed. He said, what did he say? Eight or nine? He's got early starts. Eight or nine, yeah. He gets yeah. up at And we only just started at eight. Uh, at nine. Nine, yeah. <laughs> Although I do have a 5 a.m. start too, so. We thought we'd, um, just while Kendall's getting his drink, we thought we would kick off part two of our hits, misses, and favourites. I don't like the, I still don't, no one mm. suggested a better name, so that's what it is. But anyway, <laughs> so here he comes. What's your dog's name, Kendall? Uh, this is Toby. Oh, Toby. Toby. My little man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is, uh, um, yeah, hits, hits. Uh, I'll be his suggestion. Yeah. So you said, what is it? Hits, misses, and favorites? Yeah. Well, why don't we call it uh, Hit Your Favorite Misses? Oh, Hit Your Favorite Misses. <laughs> <laughs> this is not an MA, but this is not a G rated podcast. You could definitely take that the wrong way. But I like it. Hit what? Your Favorite Misses. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, good. Yes, that's a good one. I might rename it. Um, yeah, so we're going to run through and just, I mean, you probably saw it, Kendall, but like, yeah, hits are like things they've added that we like. So it's sort of mm -hmm. new stuff. Uh, misses are things that they didn't add um, or that they added and we don't like. <laughs> and then your mm -hmm. favourites could be anything. It could be whatever, you know, what, what do you like in that section? I think it's sort of like, and in the bits that I want to cover is the whole magic part, which is quite big. So if you've got a couple for each one, that's cool. Uh, and then I just went into the strategy phase. So really it's the turn sequence and the strategy mm -hmm. phase. So next week, that way we can get into the movement and all that stuff, Andrew. So mm. just get us through all this beginning stuff. But, yeah, for magic, um, so this is just in summary, that's talking about, you know, the, the the levels of wizardry, the four levels, how to spell, you know, how to generate your spells, the different spell categories, uh, casting, dispelling, um, magic res, the miscast table, mm. uh, all that sort of stuff, how to dispel, um, how long they play, you know, the, what is it called remains in play how do you do all that sort of stuff so that's it's basically the mm -hmm. full magic phase yep. even though there is no magic phase obviously that's mm. a, a thing we can talk mm -hmm. about yeah, the magic um works. so who wants to go andrew have you got a hit for that just to sort of i yeah the... so i put mine in the in the show notes so my hit was um basically that i like that they've dispersed the magic through the other phases Yes, yes. So yeah, it got dissolved the magic phase as such, just to give a bit more tactics to it, I think. A little bit. Um just yeah, I just I just enjoyed that part. It's just a bit of a change. Yep. So. No, no, no. Yeah. I agree with that. I, I think that's a hit as well. I I like uh like it, it, as part of that, I like having a wizard who's active across the entire mm. turn. Mm -hmm. um yeah. I, I like the idea that in the the, the strategy phase you know, i can do my enchantments my my hexes mm -hmm. uh in the, the movement phase i can do my movements my, my you know my shooting phase my assailments in the combat phase mm -hmm. I, I think that's really cool I, I really enjoyed that because you know obviously i started in fourth edition um well late third edition but the uh, early fourth edition where where wizards you know really actually did to be honest they dominated the game which is you know closer to what they're doing now too but they dominated the game because they were actually able to cast in your turn, my your turn. turn. Yeah, what combat um, was it? Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. So you have right. a magic phase every turn, and basically all your wizards will fight it off against each other. And of course, um, in in the fourth edition, if you didn't have a wizard, your opponent had a wizard. He had a great time. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah, similar to the deck. Yeah, the dispel card, yeah, the I really total power it, card, like, bang. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but also, I like how in you know because the the turn's developing, there is a movement, there is the combat, there is the shooting. Um, your wizards, you know, not just being you know playing part, but their their actual potential or their role or their uh, what they're doing uh, changes as well as the turn itself develops. Um, you know, in the movement phase, uh, perhaps you know, they move that unit up there. Great, they want to be you know, you know, they should have put the enchantment on it, or they put the enchantment on. It, then in the movement phase, they moved it, and then in the yeah, you know, silent phase. They were able to, you know, enhance the combat for it or something. You know, that's mm. I like that. They like that progressive. You know, they from the if they can do step one, yeah. they can do step two, yeah, they can yeah. do step three. Hmm. Yeah, no, it, it's, I it's very. Um, yeah, no, oh, you're right, man. No, no that's, that's fine. I was gonna say it's very Gandalf. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's there <laughs> in every. In he's there in every yeah, phase yeah, of the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, that was my. I had that in my faves uh, list as just that 
I was a little worried, you know, like when they first, um, when it first came out, I was like, oh, are they, you know, what's going to happen with magic? But overall it's ended Water up being again, but, yeah. a positive because it feels like it's actually mm-hmm. more involved. You know, it's, it's just throughout the whole thing. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, just, it makes magic feel like you're in a magical world in that sense. It is fantasy because every, every phase has magic in it, which I think was a good call. Mm-hmm. I thought, I think it's worked out pretty well. Um, yeah, I, I, I think you're right. And, um, you know, is, is it a miss then that I, I say then the counter to that is it, it seems like you, you may be getting robbed of the game if you don't take magic. Mm, yeah. um, you're not getting the full experience, the full immersion. Uh, Andrew might know more. He's a dwarf. Um, oh, uh, are you yeah. missing it out? Well, depends on if you take my sweet little... Uh, the cat, what, what was, was that, Toad? Rune, the... Rune of Calm. Rune of Calm and roll like an absolute demon. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do okay, like... I mean, because I, I, I made that point when I played against that, it felt... Like it should feel like I'm playing against dwarves and half my spells yeah. aren't going off. And I thought that was like a good feeling. Like even though, you know, you're not casting any really, it was still felt yeah. like it was hard to cast against these guys, which I thought oh, you'd never really got to feel like that in eighth and stuff, just with the old magic resin stuff. It didn't really oh, yeah. feel like it, you know. In eighth though, it's like, uh, hey, my wizard's in range of this thing, you know, throw all your dice. Yeah. 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 You know, you pull up, yo. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, what do you have, Gomma? Did you have your hit? Yeah, for the hits, um, uh, I mean, I just had overall, like in terms of the like the spells that they've added in and stuff like that, there's no um, – and I, I guess it's going into this movement thing a little bit, but like there's more subtlety around some of these magic mm. that they've put into the game. Um, the and game so, winning. yeah, there's – I, mean, I guess it gets into the powerful, rules a bit, yeah. but – yeah, like on one hand, I remember going through the spell laws, and I know we're not talking about that here, but um, and before you played the game, you were looking at them going, oh, these are a bit piss poor. You know, like it was like <laughs> the, the spells look. But they're always so uh-huh. yeah. subtle. Yeah, and, you know, even things. And then like initially, you know, like the wind blast spell was an example. I remember first looking at it going, oh, you know, I can't remember. It was an AP. Is it AP minus? Is it strength? What do you get hit with? Strength four, yeah, AP? Strength five, AP. AP. Is it? Isn't it strength It's five? a pretty good little hit, but the fact yeah, that it pushes sh- them back range, as well, yeah. it's just like, yeah, yeah, plus yeah. Three hits. Yeah. you know, when you first saw it, you go, oh, yeah, okay, blows them away. But, I mean, there's just little ones like that that you're just like, okay, they, they become quite powerful. And so I think yeah. there was some subtlety that they thought about when they added these in, um, mm. and especially because mm-hmm. it's mixed across the whole game at the whole game that it's to me it's a, a big hit it's it's definitely mm. more surprise it surprised me how uh how in depth how deep some of these magic strategies can be yeah. and, and you yeah. sort of mentioned it kind of like <laughs> movement still gets me where i'm like oh shit i really should have moved that last turn because now when it's hex it's like strategy phase i can't cast what i want because i'm not in range yeah I, I, so you got to really well, think it like turns ahead yeah exactly right so i've played a Britannian player a couple of times and you know, he's got some really good spells, but, uh, you know, they all have, you know, their enchantments or their hexes in that uh, in illusion. Mm. And then, um, you, know, one of the, you know, one of the good vortex spells is then, you know, the ice um, tower, or what they call yeah, it, the yeah. ice column. Column of crystal. And, but that's a, yeah. but then that's a vortex, and that's in the yeah. shooting phase. And, you know, you've yeah. already moved your Bretonians up, and, and, and now you're trying to block your Bretonians from charging, or you're trying to block your <laughs> opponent from countercharging your Bretonians. And, you know, yeah. you, it's good. I like the ranges. I, I like um, what I... I Notice and I've enjoyed it. There's even a level four wizard. I'm not a huge fan of you know, you know, two level fours or something like that or against your opponent with nothing. But even a level four wizard is only going to get you know, two or maybe three spell chances a turn because they may have an assailment spell, which of course they can't use it, or they may mm. run this turn so now they can't use the, the magic missiles. Um, it really feels like you, most of the time they're still only, you know, even in the most perfect circumstances, of their four spells. They'll get three to you know, have a crack at. Yeah. Um, yeah. Un- mm. I feel like the undead are a little bit different there. A lot of their spells are always good. Um, mm. So if they get to use it a lot more across the phases. But um, yeah, I think that's another little way that they've uh, you know, curtailed or restrained the magic it is. A little bit, yeah. You're balanced it a little bit. You know, you, yeah. you know, you can have a level you know one or a two. And the great thing about level one, two, the one or two spells they have, they probably get to use every turn. Um, mm. You know, the level three, three or four, you might not be actually actually use all their spells every turn. You don't get to tail them. You have some, somewhat you might think of as a stinker uh, in your uh, your spell list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. That is true. I suppose if you're taking a level one or two, 
usually you've got a there's a reason you're taking that, isn't it? Like there's mm. a yep. Yeah, you're trying to get the yeah. signature. Or, yeah. You're trying to get yeah the signature yeah. or yeah, yeah yeah or more dispel. Well, that's it. You just want the signatures, which it's yeah. it's what you know if you have the access to two or three different um, mm. you know, spell lists, that's pretty good. But you know, you if you're a level four, you probably end up with a, an assailant spell, and you're like, no, just wait. I'm I'm, I'm a pretty little boy in a pretty little dress. Yeah, you're not, I don't you're not do it up. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not a this dragon. Is not what yeah. I'm doing. Yeah. 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 So you never get to use that spell. So you, now you're down to three spells. But then, you know, you know, one of your spells is a, a a shooting spell. But you you had to run because you know this dragon's you know breathing down your your back. You know. Yeah. So yeah, I, I've I've been noticing even you know level threes, level fours are still only casting two or three times a a, a turn. And mm. I, I noticed a couple of different lists. Um, you know, as I said, that the, the Tomb Kings and the Undead have probably got the you know the most reliable uh, with the spells they can take. Uh, to mm. be able to you know cast at, at, in more phases than others because yeah. uh, you know some of them not even you know some of those aren't dead wizards don't even worry about being in combat yeah, yeah. Well, was that yeah i mean necromancy mm. so like you know because you got the two what leadership debuffs you got a good magic missile yep. you've got uh, um i mean yeah i think that movement one's about the only weird one because i think it's only a character and sometimes if your characters are running around dragons yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry it's weird. infantry it's, it's, character yeah, same as demonology, you know, state of shadows. It's like, oh, mm. no, I don't, I don't want to use state of shadows because you know I'm not, <laughs> I, I don't want to zip my character around by himself. Yeah. Or, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Now, cool. What about some misses then? I mean, we've probably alluded to some of them. Um, what have you got, Andrew, for a miss? Uh, I think Kendall hit this before. It was just the, uh, although he he kind of just talked it talked it up so i'm like oh uh, i'll see where he stands on this but um the just i wouldn't say that it's it's a must to take a level three level four but obviously it's mm. um just just to being able to have defensive, it's advantageous that's for sure yeah, yeah yeah defensive magic to the ability to dispel because obviously myself and gomo have had games where i forget one of us had a level two and the other had a level four and that was quite domineering for the even though it's only plus two but i mean it, it, it can be yeah yeah it, you start to feel it definitely um yeah. well, so. my, sorry I'll, I'll respond to that quickly like I, I found my tactics have changed uh because my empire never takes wizards um but I, most of my other lists i don't take wizard lords anyway my tactics have changed that now I'll, I'll look to see where that wizard lord's coming down on the other side of the board and i'll put my you know level two across from him and i will move him up I'll make sure that I move him up, you know, into range. So even though he's, you know, the, the you know level four is getting plus two on him, the level four, you know, still has to cast a spell. He's getting great yeah. bonuses. It's very little chance he's going to fail. But you know, double ones, you know, two or three, four, fives, you might not get those spells off. So the onus is on him to cast the spell in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, the fact that I get to try and dispel it every single time, like everything he casts, even if I'm at a deficit of, you know, two. You know, at least I'm getting a chance. So, you know, mm. I've, I've developed that sort of tactic where I am pushing things into the zone um, to try and, and counter him. Uh, the, the, you know, chance, the times I've taken a level four, uh, it's it's quite funny. You, you'll find you, you and your opponent moving your level fours out of each other's dispel zone mm. um, just so they can get the spell they need off. Yeah, and then, yeah. you know, in the next turn, I'll move mine yeah. up because I just, you know... <laughs> He's playing this game, trying to stay just twenty five inches away from each other, yeah. while, you know, circling around. Yeah, each I know. Well, I did it. I think I did it. Andrew's here. I was like, oh, I'll go outside of twenty four. Oh, but now next turn I'm out of twenty. No, I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like that, that, that's right. That's the funny little game you play. You just keep you know jumping over each other's twenty four, just trying to get one or two spells off, and then realize you can't dispel him the next turn yeah. unless he moves uh, forward. Yeah. yeah. Unless you get the uh, sneaky ones with the reserve move, yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah I, I think yeah. that's that's it though. You just have to keep the pressure on. You have to like as you, as I said, the onus is on your opponent to cast a spell in the first place, and yeah. then you know you, you should always try and get that level two in there just so you can start you know having a crack at everything that he throws. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that is the minimum there, like level level two, because they're they're not overly expensive, and like you said, you can. Mm. Yeah, level well, one's an undead of mine for the leadership test. Sorry. Oh, please. yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'll just, I'm going to jump in and just say one of my misses because it's on the same vein there is that, that we're only seeing level, like generally level fours or level twos, unless you've something like undead where you just, you're bringing the wizard for his leadership stuff, not for 
the spells. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's just a bit of a shame and I don't know what the fix there yep. is and stuff, but I really, I felt like in eighth, it was actually quite strategic, like obviously a lot of level ones, but sometimes you'd bring yeah. a level three, it was fine, you know, um, mm. and you just don't see that at the moment. Um, yeah, uh, I, I, I don't see much delineation between a why you wouldn't take a, a level, you know, four, you know, mm. why, would you ta- why would you take a little three if you can take a little four? Yeah, um, 30 you know, points, the, the points, it is, it's yeah. 30 points. Yeah, yeah, like the, the, the like it, back in the uh, the previous editions, you know, your level one to level two was like 30 or 35 points, yeah, and then your level three to level four was 50 points. Mm. You know, mm. they actually made it, uh, you know, a bit more of a yeah. leap, a bit more of a chance that you could have taken something else in your army because, yeah, you, if you didn't do this, hmm. yeah, I don't know, I, I, I don't see the point of level threes. I think what I don't see a point of is level three magicians. Yep. Level four is yeah. Level game. two is yeah. Yep. Level ones maybe, but level three is I don't I don't know why you stop at level three. Yeah. So I don't know what they can fix there apart from I mean maybe there isn't a fix. Maybe just at some point they just disappear and they become three levels of wizards. I don't know. <laughs> like yeah. I, just, I don't know. Um. Yeah. That's anyway. That's that was one. Of, I had a few misses. So I don't know if uh, yeah, mm-hmm. Kendall, if you got a different miss. Um. I, I don't know. Things. I'm not getting ahead of our, us if I go off, you know, past this one page that we've got up on screen. Oh, right? no, 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 no. You can go anywhere in the magic. Okay. Anywhere in the magic. All right. So, yeah. miscasts. So, <laughs> ooh. One, yeah. of the, one of the great levels in the game used to be miscasts. It's like, you know, it's, it's something that um, I think it was really the worst in, in 7th edition where, you know, there's a good chance that there was your miscast is going to kill you. Yeah. Um, in 8th edition, even then, you had the, you, you got to fall down a hole, a hole right, on a yeah. 4 plus. Yep, yeah, to um, cascade, yep. That just doesn't exist yeah. in this miscast table. Yeah. So this this miscast table, if you you cast a, I think it's a seven or more, you're fine. Oh yeah, um, and you like get the spell seven, off. Yeah, <laughs> on an eight, nine, or a ten. Yeah, is it? Okay. yeah. yeah. It's like eight, it to nine. Me. <laughs> so on an eight, nine, the spell is cast, but you can't yeah. cast anymore for the turn. Who cares? You got yeah. to cast the spell. I know. Ten, yeah, twelve. No. The power goes off irresistibly. The summon magic is unleashed unresistibly, you know? It's like, uh, this is rude. Like, yeah. why this? Like, that, if you look at it, you know, that, that 10 to 12 is what? There's like a one in six chance. Mm. Eight to nine that you know, increases it, you know, something good happening on a, like, maybe a one in four. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and something terrible happening is, you know, you get a blast, your wizard will take a string, you know, a single hit. Mm. You know, yeah. And most of the time, yeah. let's, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it feels like, the, yeah. It feels like a lot of the times the wizards are hanging around on chariots or dragons mm. or whatever. Anyway, they don't care about getting hit. <laughs> I, yeah. I will admit, yeah. so this is bad, this miscast table. I don't like the miscast table, but I, I don't know if it's a good thing or bad thing in respect to this, mm. but the spelling, you can miscast as well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. I saw it happen the other day. We're playing a game and the, the spelled and miscast. You know, yeah. took a, 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 a you know, strength seven hit or something, or strength something rubber hit on himself and blew a couple other guys over. I think that's rude. How <laughs> rude is that? Like, imagine if you're just a guy just trying to struggle by with a level one or yeah, level yeah. two and all the bars <laughs> and stuff. For a little yeah. level one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, that, look, that was my second miss was the whole miscast is probably too lenient. That's all right. <laughs> it's just, yeah. Uh, yeah. it feels, I've, I've miscast, you know, I don't know, maybe four times now or something like that and i swear half the time i've still got everything it didn't matter you know i got the spell off the spell went off your opponent was dead yeah Yeah. well in our recent game i had the plus one to cast from my um mortis engine Mm. but then i I miscast and then i had to do roll twice on the miscast table oh yeah that's right all it was was like the spell went off and the yeah. turn ended. <laughs> just like, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, I think you rolled a, an eight and nine and a ten and twelve, so it went off yeah, resistibly yeah, yeah, yeah. and it just yeah. ended the turn. So just, like, oh, just great. ended the turn. Well, and like, that's okay. not that's yeah. not a bad result, to be honest with Gomo. Um, like shutting down the the undead, mm. you know, magic for you know, well, uh, to be honest, I don't know how far into the game or far into the oh, turn sequence remember. that or yeah. was. Yeah. But the other thing is that like, there's nothing there about yeah, it goes off irresistibly. Any remains in play spells, are, you know, instantly end like it used to be. Even yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Or, you know, all spell effects come to an end as the, the power of, you know, the winds of power get drained it away. It all down. Yeah, that's the thing. They yeah. could, yeah, there's a few, it's just, like, yeah, but they, it, they it, need, what, once they again, need it's, to it's encouraging it, you to yeah. take lots of wizards. Yeah. yeah. I, I, there's nothing stopping people taking two level, you know, without comp restrictions or not being a dick, 
nothing mm. stopping you t- from taking two level fours in your list. Yeah, especially yeah, everybody. You six or seven spells off. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Unless you get a sell the spell. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Nightgold's um, fantastic. Did we, you had yours, didn't you, Andrew? Yep. Yep. Going to favourites. So what? I guess what's your favourite? Unless other people have. So you, if you've got multiple negatives, let me know. I mean, there probably is. Um, but mm. um, I did have one other. Oh, you know what? Actually, I did have one. It was around spell generation. Um, I didn't mind. I like the idea of that. If you roll doubles, you got to choose your eighth when you rolled them up, and then now you're just going to oh. keep bloody rolling your dice until you don't rolling. get a duplicate. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I. I miss that not having the um just that yeah, was good. Double uh, pick one. But but there is a, a fantastic counter that everyone has access to is that what was it thirty point item to pick your yeah, spells? Yeah, law familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and if you're a level four, you're taking a law familiar most likely. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah. So you don't end up that assailant spell, and you end up the spell. So every turn, every you know sequence, you get to do something. Yeah, you know, yeah. Make it worth your while. Yeah, no, that's right. Cool. Let's go on to some favourites. What's your favourite, Andrew? In the what they do with the magic? What do they? I. This is probably going to be a bit of people disagreeing with me here. I don't know if you too well, but um, I just like the two d six just to speed it up, so you don't have mm-hmm. people piss mm-hmm. farting around trying to. Uh, it. It was just Count a slow. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It, it just slowed things down. Um, because you had people dispelling, and then well, I don't know. I just found it was a slower part of the game. Um, it's yep, not no, as you're right. yep. cool, you know. It used to be cool when you generated your power dice. It was like a little, yeah. But you know. it was always like that, wasn't it? Though you're right. You're like oh, haggling over this. Do I put three dice in or two dice? And then it didn't matter anyway. Like you probably didn't cast or whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you spent ten, fifteen minutes debating it. <laughs> Whereas <laughs> this is like, I when this first came out, I remember saying, "This is awesome. This is like the the Tomb King sixth edition. I just had to keep rolling two d six for every spell yeah, I had." Yeah. Didn't have to think about it. <laughs> it's good. I don't recall the Tomb Kings ever miscasting. No, no, that was even better. <laughs> and you could also charge. You could roll double one and go, you still have to roll a dice to stop this. Yeah. 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 yeah what about you, uh, Kendall? Have you got a. Well, because my favorite was the. Uh, I already talked about it, so I'm going to try to find another one. Yeah, I feel like I talked about my favorite already as well. Oh, um, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're probably I've, uh, yeah, stepped on my own feet here. <laughs> but I don't know. Um, I, you know so I was free to reiterate. My, my favorite is just uh, you know having uh, being active in every turn, or every yeah, sequence. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. Like I already basically explained it. I, I guess you know a, a favorite is the breaking down of the spells and you know where they can be used um, mm. in each of the, in the phases. different phases. You mean that type of thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's right. So you got your assailants, your magic missiles, and all those things which you used to have before, which we all used in the single phase. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now, yeah, you know, I, I think, think the, actually the assailment one would be one that I think is interesting in that, yeah, there's probably a bit of a, an idea that you don't put your wizards in combat at the moment, but I don't know, like the way combats go and combat res, you know, the fact that you can get combat res from stand and shoots and obviously yep. you're doing this twice in the turn, like assailments, like there's definitely some merit to not be so yeah. prude with your Yeah, I, you know, I have wizards. trialed it out. <clears throat> I, I do have a question. Um, assailment spells. It's the combat phase. Uh, do, do you cast your assailment spells when it's that wizard's combat f- um, combat to occur? Or do you can you cast it at any point in the combat phase? Oh, I thought it was uh, your initiative step. In, cause yeah, it that's was what I would have thought. Classes and attack. No, 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 you but say initiative know. step, but, no, but, but remember, you, you're picking your combat. So let's say I've got three combats. Yeah. And I do start with this combat over here, then I do this combat here. And you know, do do I have to do it at the beginning of the combat phase as my wizard cast a spell, or do I go to wait till it's the combat that my wizard's involved in? I do my assailant spell. Does it happen before anything else in that combat? Like, uh, do I challenge this guy out? My wizard's in close combat with this guy in a challenge. Then I do my assailant spell, or do I do my assailant spell before I do that challenge? Or well, I would thought it'd be before? yeah. Well, I, I it, to me, it's just it's it's an attack. So like, you do all your challenges. Well. You, mm. you don't do you declare your challenges before it all starts, and then you just start down the initiative. Yeah, that is initiative. And then once that's you hit question. yours, that's your assault. Yeah, that's, that's your attack. Point. So I, I had a a great unclean one charge into combat. He had higher initiative. He had an assailment spell. Do I cast the assailment spell at the beginning of that combat, or do I wait for the challenge and then I get to you know 
do double damage to this one guy who stood up to you know to try and knock me down. Um, like I, I read through it. Like, oh, like <laughs> well, I don't. You're right. I don't think it's fully like in there. I think the only thing is when you go to combat, it talks about. Is it, it's in the oddball mm. bit, isn't it? Um, I thought it was other there there's any assault, that, uh, they may attempt in addition to making normal attacks when it's their turn to fight as in by their okay so then it's it's in their combat yeah okay so it's after challenges have been declared yeah. it's in that combat tab. okay thanks guys yeah yeah so just be <laughs> you just got to treat it like a weapon but the cool thing is they get to do that and make their attacks as well so yeah uh, yeah because it's pretty cool all wizards have those great you know awesome, oh, yeah yeah you know, <laughs> well magic yeah. weapon some of and you do it be, both phases, know. so you do it in your, your yeah, enemy's yeah, phase exactly. as well. So yeah. that's why I just well, think you can do not... assailants in your enemy's phase as well. Yeah, yeah, because it's just a combat. So you attack, you mm. do your assailment spell in their turn as well, like each time. Mm. Sort of thing. You so both I do guess it. you kill, you, you go for the wizard, you assassinate the wizard first. Okay. Yeah. Good advice. But I just feel like because of that, there unclean. hasn't maybe the... Um... Yeah, I had a great unclean one. I should have been doing this. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Well, Especially yeah, it's, you can't really assassinate like, it tough. that quickly, can you? Yeah, no, I, I think... He was uh, doing pretty fine by himself. He had a flail yeah. that has D3 wounds and plus two strength on a strength six dude. Yeah, he did yeah. all right. I think it's maybe three to the armor save too on a play flail. It's disgusting. Oh, oh that's good. Disgusting. Yeah, good. That is good. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, well, let's jump. Let, these are sort of together because they're sort of the, this one probably won't take as long because it's a bit boring. But it's just the 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 turn sequence, how they've now got strategy, movement, shooting, uh, mm -hmm. combat, and then just the actual strategy phase itself. It's probably not as much to talk about in this one, but um, I guess what's anyone's hit there? Anyone can go now. I guess is it? There's not really much new here, but. I mean, sorry, it's all new no, sort of it. thing, you know, because they've changed. Well, yeah, it, it's so. the whole strategy phases, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I think the hit here is uh, having a strategy phase where they actually have those things like rallying cry and mm. um, and other little effects you know, that you know get played at now uh, rather than yeah you know, during the turn proper. Um, yep. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, it's just a, it's just made it clearer. Hey? It's just like split it out. Um, well, Especially yeah, even I just like the it, start though. of turn command, when you look at that, like when you look at the order of operations, you need to read it a bit clearer. These like at the mm -hmm. moment, but once you work that out, like it's big, it's there's a, quite a little yeah. bit of gameplay around. Well, this goes off, but then you got to wait to your command phase to do something else, and then you got to wait to conjuration. So, well, yeah, I, I, I do like the, the the hit here is uh, really in the rallying phase or the strategy phase. They've got the rallying troops. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's no longer a confusion of uh, I declare chart because it used to be. Uh, it wasn't it used to be declared charges or yeah uh, move charges then uh, you know your compulsory moves which are your fleeing guys and and that interacted poorly sometimes um, yeah yeah you know, whereas now you get those rallying troops out of the way so you guys can charge past so those rallying guys can you know uh, rally and line up in front of your charging troops that really piss you off because now they've blocked your your lane and yeah I think having that clarification okay like having them in a separate phase rather than as part of the the movement phase essentially. Um, mm. I, I like that. that. That's a hit yeah. for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my hit was just, yeah, I guess probably just that same thing around. <laughs> yeah. The whole introducing this strategy phase, Andrew, I don't know if you had anything different on that one. Nah, nah. S same sort of thing. Like it's good that they've sort of like, yeah, half your magic phase is sort of in this phase, but you've got mm. other stuff. So it's not simply just a magic phase because obviously you've got your yeah, conveyances and hexes and whatnot. Um, so they've sort of just created this other phase, but yeah, like, like you were both saying, um, kind of adds another bit of layer of, I suppose, strategy, but def defines certain, certain things quite well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I don't know if, I've, has anyone got any misses in here? Like, I'm trying to think if there's, if they've missed anything. I, I, about... I can't really see how you can do a miss here. Yeah. There's not much. Um, is it something that ruins it? I, I guess maybe if we play a few more games, something in the strategy phase might uh, like give us a kick in the shins or something like that. But I can't I know see this, it. The only thing, the only other thing I can think of, maybe I've, maybe I just haven't read enough. But there's a couple of things that always happen on the start of turn, like uh, mm. especially if there's your opponent thing starts start of turn yours, and then and then you you're back to square one where it's like, well, which one goes first? Like I can't remember. There, there might yeah. be some rules somewhere where simultaneous things have go at the same time. I'm I'm not sure. But I know um 
I know there was a few things like that, but I mean, you're always probably going to get that. Uh, yeah, well, anyway. I miss the the other day. Like it, it was good. It's it's kind of one of those things. Like the only problem I've got is like when you do stuff in this turn, like we, you know, I had the raised dead, and you were like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, just uh... just so you know, you do that during the first phase of command because I did my. Yes. Um, I yeah, started you were doing going some straight hexes into stuff. my conveyance and hexes, and yeah. then Gomo's like, "Yeah, that." If yeah, one I, phase I, doesn't I, affect I the know. other, it's kind of one of those things where, like, to me, it doesn't sort of. Yeah, it, that's right. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's all together. You know, you, you don't really de uh, delineate between them. It's it's all part of the strategy yeah. phase. Why can't you just do a bit of uh, you know raising here and a bit of casting there and. Yeah, yeah, obviously yeah. there is a, a, a sequence here that we need to be following because I imagine it does impact uh, yeah, there the, you know, decisions things, I guess. the way the game yeah. plays. Like yeah. you may yeah, not, yeah. You, you know, you may raise these trips or you fail to raise these trips, which means then you don't do that enchantment on that's going to affect something else. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, because yeah, yeah, Gummo pointed and, yeah. out, like you know, in a tournament setting, probably what you were going to say, um, it you know, you might get the wrong guy and is like. Nah, you, you no, pass. You that can't do that. You, you start a casting <laughs> spells. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. yeah. Well, that's when you buy them a beer and you say, "How about I, you know, let me get it past this time." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, you can see this rallying troops is last. You know, so obviously after you've cast your spells, after you've made your decisions about how, you know, you probably want to try and you know, mm. you know, play out the turn, then you're rallying your fleeing troops, and that might, you know, obviously have a big impact if you did that out of sequence. You know, with your other stuff. Mm. Plus, I mean, the other cool thing mentioned in here, which I'd, I'd actually do like, is um, now they can just can act normally apart from declaring a charge and, yeah. and their counter shooting. That's a big change that oh, at least right. it feels and, like they're not, you know, not out of the game heaps, you know. Like they can well, that's right. And, um, yeah, as long as you get over 50%, they didn't even flee in the first place. They they fell yeah, back they in good order. I love that. Order. Yeah. 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 Mm. But, um, you know, part of this rallying, you know, fleeing troops in the command phase, I, I love, you know, uh, hold the line and, you know, the rallying cry, sorry, rallying cry on my empire captains. They yeah. love telling people to have another crack at, or mm. to try and rally now and you always get another crack a little bit later, but still, come on, two cracks at rallying is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So I can't tell you yeah, how many yeah. games I, I've lost from rolling fistfuls of, you know, double fives and, and sixes and things like that <laughs> on an important unit. They have a chance to have a captain go, oi. I love is that. that just is that rallying cry? Is that hang on? So is that different to? I'm getting it mixed up here. Veteran is reroll any leadership test. Is the yeah. rallying cry on the that was on the generals? Yeah, and it's the a command. Captains. Yeah, no, it's, it's yeah. yeah, captains of the empire. Um, yeah, that's they right. all have rallying cry. And there's, there's a few other um, you'll find uh, in nice in the goblins and orcs. There's a couple of characters there, just the the heroes and the generals. And it's basically you just tell them to do an immediate rally test in the command phase before yep. the actual rallying phase. Yep, or so part of that. Yeah, it. it's basically getting a reroll almost in a way, but you don't need to be near a BSP. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, as you can see, it's before the conjuration phase, so it could make a difference on how you, you do conjuration. Actually, BSP doesn't even rally. Rally uh, first. Yeah, BSP wouldn't affect this anyway. It's only panic. Our BSPs don't Break know. Yeah, yeah. No, unfortunately. Yeah. No, it's good. No, I like how they've done that. I mean, that's a different part of the game, but, mm. um, you know. It's better than eighth, where it was just yeah, it just didn't seem to be a thing because everyone always had, you know, re-rollable leaderships everywhere. Re-roll everything, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah it, it was a real gem in the game if you saw someone, you know, fail that eight, you know, eight or less twice. Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, cool. Oh, well, we're getting through it. So that's uh, two of these, and I guess next week we'll get into the the big stuff movement, which probably goes mm. for a while, um, which would be good. Yeah, I'll power cool. out of that one. Yeah, no, it's all good. <laughs> Well, Josh can uh, catch up uh, when he's back. Yeah, good. Give yeah, yeah. Let's do double duty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> he was he was uh, saying he was going to try and make it to this. I'm like, dude, you're on holidays. Don't need to do that. Anyway, cool. Is there anything else we should catch up on, guys? Or was that, uh, that I can call the episode? Otherwise, it was really yeah, uh, no, really I'd good to have you on, Kendall. Yeah, I really yeah, appreciate huge. it. Thank you. Uh, I, I really should have. Sorry, guys. But I really should have uh, spooked uh, Castle. So I don't know if you guys have, but. No, no, um, yeah, no, go for you, it. Yeah, you, you, you can jump on the you know any of the Warhammer pages, but uh, more importantly, if you if you can't navigate Facebook or um or any of that, you can always send me an email at uh, Newcastle Legion at gmail dot com. Uh, just let me know that you're interested, and I'll, I'll forward you the, the the form to fill out. Yeah. Um, obviously, everything nowadays revolves around you know Facebook and how I advertise the tournaments, but I'm happy to have people on board who are a bit more of a 
a Luddite or anti-Facebook person, I'm, I'm happy to still <laughs> get you you're on board and, and play a couple of, you know, good games. I think good. it was Todd. I think Todd Lloyd signed up and he was saying that yeah. he doesn't know how to use PayPal. <laughs> no, no, I'm like, thinking no. of like, you got 3D All pictures, right. mate. It's like, I don't know how to use PayPal. Not it's it's okay. Out. His yeah. wife figured it out for him. <laughs> it's it's all it. Maybe she uh, 3D prints for him. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, love Todd. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but yeah, huge shout out to Kendall. Like, obviously, yeah. what Gamal was saying, like, coming on here, I know you've got to get up early in the morning. Um, so, yeah. I mean, that's right. No, anyway, I won't regret that till tomorrow. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I, hope, I hope you get a couple of coffees in before you start. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, hey, hopefully it's a big one, and hopefully we'll uh, fill that one right up and get it to the uh, max uh, mm. that we can get yeah, it to and, and get the community back because it just feels like it. You know, I'm one of the bad yeah. ones that sort of, as soon as eighth died, I sort of ran away. Um, mm-hmm. And I should have probably stayed, but anyway, I'm back now. So it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> no, fantastic. Cool. Thanks, guys. Anyway. I really appreciate it. Well, um, we'll wrap this up, listeners. Thanks for listening to another Old World Fanatics episode. Um, If you enjoyed our weekly ramblings, we'd love a five-star review on your podcast software choice and or if you're watching us on YouTube, hit that like, subscribe button and... uh, you know, once again, just for all the patrons, a big thank you. And if you're looking to join the patrons, just go to patreon.com slash oldworldfanatics and you can join it there. And we've got a chat group and all that sort of stuff, um, a Discord, and you're going to have a chat to us in there as well. So really appreciate K- uh, Kendall. Thanks for coming on us, uh, like I just yep, said before. Yep, and um, if I don't see you, well, I will see you before Castle. So I'll, I'll make it to a Legions at some point. So. Surely. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I know. I need to. <laughs> Andrew, we should go. It's on this weekend. <laughs> Maybe we should. <laughs> Stop uh, shit. Anyway, guys, have a good uh, have a good rest of your week, guys, and we'll uh, talk to you again soon. Cheers, guys. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Bye. I, I definitely haven't listened to the outro music before. So I haven't oh, made yeah. that far into an episode. It's a dice. <laughs> it's a dice. That gets you. And